I hope you guys grabbed you a snack and a beverage because this is going to be a long one. I am getting ready to show off my entire Blu-ray collection. Stay tuned. What's up, guys, and welcome back to the Mid-Level Media channel. And guys, to be honest, I have been putting this one off because I knew it was going to be a doozy. I knew it was going to be a lot of time invested. And I, I kind of thought about maybe doing it by genres, maybe kind of breaking it down further than I already have. You know, I've already shown off my entire Arrow collection, uh, my Screen Factories, my specialty stuff, my 4Ks, my steel books. I'm breaking it down into sections, so I, this will not include everything. If you want to see the, the full extent of my collection, go back and check out those videos because this is technically going to be part seven of my Blu-ray collection series and the finale to that series. So, But yeah, I, I decided to just go ahead and go for it, guys. I'm going to go ahead and show off every single video. I do not care how long it takes. It, it, it will likely take me an hour probably an hour and a half, but it could go two hours, guys. I'm going to be honest. This could be the longest. In fact, I know it will be the longest video I have ever done on YouTube. So I don't anticipate all of you watching the entire thing, at least not in its entirety. But if you do sit through the entire video, you will get to see the full force and extent um, of my blue ray collection and all of its glory. So, and, and another thing guys is full disclosure. Um, I'm not going to be editing this video. I'm going to let it run straight through. If I, if I mess up anything, if I, if I talk over myself, if I slur my words, um, none of that's going to be edited out. So, and we're already off to a pretty rough start because I've got all these Blu-rays stacked over here and I just had an entire pile fall over on me <laughs> right before I started the video. So this is going to be a fun one guys, but I'm going to go ahead and get into it. And I cannot think of two better titles to start off with. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and show them together because they kind of go, they kind of go with each other a little bit. Then the, the 2008 Oscar nominated for best picture, uh, movies, There Will Be Blood, and No Country for Old Men. And both of these films are freaking fantastic. I love them both. Um, and it was definitely a hot topic uh, of controversy the year that they were both nominated for Oscars because they were both such great films. Um, and there were people that There Will Be Blood camp. There was people in the No Country for Old Men camp. I personally, I like No Country for Old Men just a little bit more. That, that little bit more, it, it fits my style. And plus... Javier Bardem is just one of the greatest villains um, of the 2000s of that decade. So I love the film for that. But yeah, both excellent films. There will be Blood directed by Paul Thomas Anderson. No Country for Old Men directed by the Coen Brothers. And you're going to be seeing more movies from those directors in the collection to come. So my next one, guys, is a movie that I still haven't seen all the way through. I watched part of it. And to be honest, I just wasn't into it. But Foxcatcher from 2014 with Steve Carell. Um, and uh, Channing Tatum, Mark Ruffalo, about the, the wrestling that story. I think it was a documentary. Um, I don't know everything about it, but yeah, I couldn't get into that one. Um, but uh, I, I'm going to pick it back up at one point. I just don't think I was in the mood for it. It's a very dark and dreary film. But all right, guys, so next one up is F. Gary Gray's film, Law Abiding Citizen, with Jamie Foxx and Gerard Butler. I really like this film a lot. There's some people that give it a little backlash, um, and I don't think it got reviewed very well when it came out, but when I watched it, I thought it was freaking great. So um, definitely need to rewatch that one soon. But all right, guys, next up is Life of Pi. I still have not seen this movie. I've heard it's a visual masterpiece, but yeah, I'll check it out at some point. And this is one of my favorites from the 2010s. It was in my top 25 of the last decade. This is Creed by director Ryan Coogler, starring Sylvester Stallone and Michael B. Jordan. This is one of the best examples of how to do a reboot to a franchise right, in my opinion. Next up, guys, classic war film Saving Private Ryan, uh, directed by Steven Spielberg. So phenomenal film, phenomenal war film. Um, you know, what else can you say about it? One of the best. And this one, guys, is a 2010 Western, True Grit, directed by the Coen Brothers. So this is a really good film as well. I enjoyed it. Um, I didn't think it quite lived up to the hype that I was anticipating. Um, a, a lot of people really praise this movie as being a great uh, modern Western. I thought it was good. Just good. Next up, guys, this was, I 
Dollar Tree pickup, I think, but it's starring one of the best actors working today, in my opinion. That's Shia LaBeouf and, and Charlie Countryman. I have not seen this yet. Still in the plastic. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to checking that one out soon. And you guys will notice that's a theme with a lot of my Blu-rays. They're probably still in the plastic. Um, a lot of them are just like Dollar Tree bargain bin pickups that I haven't unwrapped yet. Next one up, guys, one of my favorites from 2016, Nocturnal Animals with Amy Adams and Jake Gyllenhaal phenomenal movie i love this movie it is a great thriller one of the best next one is the nice guys with uh with uh what's ryan gosling russell crowe this is a really really underrated under the radar um kind of comedy action noir just a bunch of things in one it kind of reminds you a little bit of la confidential but it's a lot more comedic um and yeah ryan gosling if you don't believe he can be a comedic actor um, if you think he's all notebook and la la land, he he's freaking great in this movie. He's hilarious. Russell Crowe too, both of them. And coincidentally enough, we have Ellie Confidential right after it. So um, I recently watched this for the first time as a part of my 1997 series. I think it's okay. It was good. Um, definitely didn't uh, live up to my expectations though. Next one up, guys, is the uh, the best actor from this year, starring film from a couple years ago. You were never really here, starring Walking Phoenix. Really good movie. Uh, it, uh, uh, a, a real kind of spiritual successor to Taxi Driver. I know a lot of people say that Joker is that, but this um, even more so, just in the way that um, you know Walking Phoenix delivers his performance and the things that he does in the movie. Um, it, it more embodies that tone than I think Joker does even. So you were never really here. Definitely check that one out. Next up, guys, is the movie that Gary Oldman won Best Actor for, The Darkest Hour, 2017 film. Really good film. Really good film for sure. Next one up, guys, is a movie that Bryce Dallas Howard has recently come out and spoke against, saying this is not the best movie to watch um, for, for racial issues. And... I kind of agree, but I still like the movie, um, The Help, as the 2011 film. So it's got some really good performances in it. Um, you got, uh, you know, the always lovely Emma Stone. You got Viola Davis, Bryce Dallas Howard, Jessica Chastain. This movie is stacked with a stellar cast. I really enjoy it. But all right, next one up, guys. We got more Ryan Gosling and drive so this is kind of the movie that a lot of people hold up when people say that ryan gosling is just the notebook la la land guy they're like no he was actually pretty badass in the movie drive and i have to agree this movie's awesome next one up guys is a movie that i absolutely love like i just love this movie and i will admit it's very kind of cheesy and hokey and traditional um by way of like traditional like rom-com uh, standards but I love this movie, Crazy Stupid Love. It is one of my favorite um, romantic comedies from at probably the past 10 years. I, I love the movie. Crazy Stupid. Great cast, dude. Steve Carell. Uh, one of the few Steve Carell um, film performances that I enjoy. Next one up, guys, is Matthew McConaughey and Reese Witherspoon in Mud. So I have not got a chance to check out Mud yet. I've heard a lot of really good things, so I'm hoping to, hoping to be able to watch this soon sometimes. You know, who knows when I'll get to it, but... Um, yeah, definitely need to check out Mud. Next one up, guys, is the movie that will surely make you cry every single time you watch it. It's just so emotional. Manchester by the Sea. That is a 2017 Best Picture nominee. So, yeah, I, I like this movie. I don't think it's the masterpiece that a lot of people say it is. Um, it's really over the top in the kind of uh, dramatic, grieving moments that it delivers. And it's just so horrific what happens in the movie that it's almost unbelievable. I don't know. I'm probably the only person that feels that way. But next one, guys, this is a really great movie from 2017, Wind River, with uh, Elizabeth Olsen and uh, Jeremy Renner. So you got Hawkeye and you got Scarlet Witch in a, a kind of uh, well, dramatic uh, Western type movie. Um, and it's from the the writer of Hell or High Water and the first Sicario, um, Ty Sheridan. So. Um, yeah, I think this is a great film. Definitely one of the best uh, kind of Western thriller crime movies of the past few years. And speaking of that, we got Hell or High Water, which this is a, a Best Picture nominee. Phenomenal movie. Excellent performances by everybody. Um, um, you got uh, Jeff Bridges, Chris Pine, Ben Foster. They're all freaking great in this movie. I love this movie. 
And then we got Sicario. The first Sicario is phenomenal, guys. Directed by uh, D- Denis Villeneuve. And you're going to be seeing a lot more Denis Villeneuve films in this stack. But, uh, you know, uh, unfortunately, guys, I, I, I tried to organize it best I could. But as you can see, I don't have any real rhyme or rhythm <laughs> to my collection other than genre. I try to keep, like, uh, dramas together, horror, superhero film, sci-fi. So that's the theme that you'll be seeing. But yeah, I, I tried to get some stuff together like directors and sequels and stuff like that before we started, but I didn't get everything together. So Sicario, the neat Villeneuve film kind of stands on its own right here. Next one up, guys, is a Brian Cranston film, The Infiltrator. So this was a Dollar Tree pickup, I think, for a buck. I went and grabbed that. I have not seen the movie yet, but uh, yeah, I honestly can't remember what I heard about this. I feel like I heard it was just okay, but I don't know. Next up, guys, is Snowden with Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Have not seen this movie either, but I have heard pretty good things. And we got Eye in the Sky with Hella Mirren. Um, you got uh, um, Aaron Paul, Alan Rickman, what I'm assuming was one of Alan Rickman's last roles. Um, it would have had to be. I think this movie came out in 2016, and he died maybe in 2017, 2018, somewhere around there. Um yeah, I haven't checked that one out yet, but I heard that was actually a phenomenal film, so I need to bleed for this with Miles Teller and Aaron Eckhart. So I have not seen this either. I heard it was pretty good. I don't know. You tell me. All right, guys. We're going to get ready for the next stack here. And the next one up, guys, I have Lion. Lion with the with the kid from uh, Dev Patel from Slumdog Millionaire, and you got Rooney Mara and Nicole Kidman. I've heard a lot of great things about this movie, and it was a 2017 Best Picture nominee, but I have not watched it yet, so I need to give Lion a watch. Next one is another film I haven't seen yet, Daniel Radcliffe in the Jungle. So I saw this for really cheap at Walmart, I remember a few years ago. Um funny story like the dvd was there and the blu-ray was there and the blu-ray was eight bucks and the dvd was 13 dollars. so just based on that i, I grabbed the blu-ray because i thought it was a mistake or something um, and i was trying to get one over on walmart but um yeah and i haven't watched it yet so who who really got uh who really got the win there uh this movie i have no idea why i even have it it's called on the road i think it was a dollar tree pickup but it's got a really good cast amy adams is in it um Kristen Stewart, Viggo Mortensen, um, Kirsten Dunst. Like, it's got a lot. Uh, Elizabeth Moss. Like, this movie's got a lot of people in it. It's a ton of people, but I'd never heard of it. So it, it would have to be good, right? You would think with a cast like that? I don't know. This one, guys, Nicole Kidman and Colin Firth. And before, um, before I go to sleep. So I think this is another Dollar Tree pickup. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I'll ever get around to watching this, to be honest. Some of these, a lot of these you'll notice, I'm going to say, I need to watch this at some point, but it's so many, like, how am I ever going to get to them? I'll get to them. I'll get to them at some point. This next one up, guys, Steve Jobs from 2015. I r- really didn't like this movie. I didn't like this movie. Um, I heard a lot of great things about it. I just didn't like the way it was structured. It was structured, re- it was very unique um, in the way they told the story, but I thought I, I was expecting more of a traditional biopic and it was, it just, it had like three very specific events in his life. Um, and it was all confined to like one location and yeah, it, it was good. I liked the, the, the filmmaking aspect of it. It was unique, but I just, I couldn't engage with it. Um, I do love Michael Fassbender, Kate, Kate Winslet and Seth Rogen, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It, it was, it was okay. Next one up is, is a movie that I really need to rewatch. I remember watching it 2015 when it came out, and I really loved it. But The Big Short, um, directed by Adam McKay, who also did Anchorman, and uh, he did recently the uh, Vice movie. Um, but yeah, this is a really good movie, and freaking Christian Bale is phenomenal in this movie. Also has Ryan Gosling. All right, guys. Next one up is this uh, mind-bending thriller from 2010, Black Swan. So... Any Black Swan fans out there? Natalie Portman, it's actually her birthday today. So happy birthday to Natalie Portman. It won't be by the time I put the video up, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell her happy birthday anyway. I'm going to tell her happy birthday. Queen Amidala herself. All right, another Coen Brothers movie, Hail Caesar. I actually, I heard a lot of bad things about this movie. I kind of enjoyed it. I thought it was okay. I thought it was pretty good. 
I don't know. I don't know. You tell me. You fan of Hell Caesar? A classic from the 90s, guys. Uh, space biopic Apollo 13 with Tom Hanks, Gary Sinise, Bill Paxton. Just a stellar cast. Ron Howard film. Stellar cast. Stellar cast. Great movie. One I definitely need to rewatch. I don't think I've seen Apollo 13 in years. All right, guys. So this is a Craig S. Zoller film. You got dragged across concrete. So um, I, I like this film. I really like this film. It's very gritty. Um, I didn't like it as much as I did his other two films, but yeah, I liked it. Mel Gibson, um, Vince Vaughn. Yeah, it was. this is a good movie. It's a little long, a little longer than it needed to be, but yeah, I really liked it. It came out last year. Next up, guys, another Denis Villeneuve film. One of the movies of his that I have not seen yet, and that's Incinities. I think I pronounced that right. Yeah, I, I bought this like a year ago when I, with the... Um, the notion that I was going to watch it so I could uh, rank his films because it was like one of the last major ones. And I don't count the ones he did before. I probably should, but um, I wanted to rank like his six main films and I haven't got around to watching it yet, but I don't know. Maybe I'll watch it soon. Next one up, guys, another movie I need to watch. Fury. Brad Pitt. Uh, Shia LaBeouf. This movie has a great cast. Michael Pena. Yeah. Yeah. This, I've heard really good things about this movie. David Ayer, who also did Suicide Squad, um, recently directed this movie. I've heard a lot of great things about this movie. But, um, yeah, I haven't got a time to check it out, though. But, uh, yeah, hopefully soon. Next one up, guys, another Dollar Tree pickup. It's Clint Eastwood film Changeling with Angelina Jolie. I don't know anything about this movie. Ooh, I love this movie. Birdman, Michael Keaton. Great film. I love it so much. I know a lot of people say, like, I don't know what it is um, with people. They, they have something against the one-shot gimmick, I guess. Because everybody just bitches and complains about, oh, it's all one-shot gimmick. There's no, no style, no stuff. Are you kidding me? Like, I just love everything about this movie. I love the performances. Um, I love the characters. I love the story. Um, the filmmaking is only a, a small part of what I love about it. And then that's phenomenal, too. But, yeah, this movie is a freaking great film. I, I love it. And, like, this... Just missed out on my top 25 of the past decade, but I, I should have honestly had it in there. I love this movie. Birdman. Best Picture winner, too. All right, guys. So another Adam McKay film I was talking about earlier, Vice, with Christian Bale as Dick Cheney. This is a really good movie. It's a really good movie. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. This one from 2017, haven't seen it yet, but this is The Post with Tom Hanks and Meryl Streep. Heard some good things about this one. Steven Spielberg directed the film, so I should probably get around to watching it at some point, but The Post. Next up, guys, is a Terrence Malick film. Probably the only Terrence Malick film I own. King of Cups, or Knight of Cups, that's what it's called. Kate Blanchett, Christian Bale, Natalie Portman. Another Natalie Portman sighting. Happy birthday, Natalie. I'm going to keep saying it every time she pops up. Next up, guys, is a, another Danny Boyle film, 127 Hours with James Franco. So, yeah, I watched this uh, about a year ago, maybe two years ago now. Yeah, I think it was over two years ago. I really like this film. It's a really good kind of close quarters, confined, claustrophobic film about him getting stuck down there um, with his leg. And, yeah, um, it. Yeah, it's a really good film. It keeps you on edge the entire time. Just the things he has to go through. Next up, guys, a Robert Zemeckis film, Allied, from 2016. Have not seen this movie yet. Have not seen it. Brad Pitt, uh, Marianne Cotillard. Next film, guys, American Animals. I this. If you guys have not seen American Animals, it is one of the best films from, I believe it was 2018. Yeah, great film. I love American Animals. All right, guys, 10 Best Picture nominated film, American Hustle. Yeah, I really, I like this movie. I like this movie. I didn't think it was that great, but I, I liked it. I liked it. All right, I, I kind of like this movie, Whiplash. It's pretty good, right? No, I'm just kidding. This is my favorite film of the past decade. I freaking love this movie. Freaking, I, 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 I speak about it ad nauseum. If you follow me on Instagram, I'm always posting about Whiplash and trying to talk it up as one of the best films of the 21st century. It's a phenomenal film. Damien Chaz Chazelle's debut. And yeah, I love it. Love Whiplash. 
All right, and I got, I'm going to follow that up with two uh, versions of La La Land, Damien Chazelle's follow up. So I got, yeah, I saw this at Target, like after I bought this, and I'm like, I, I want both covers. So yeah, I got two covers of La La Land. Still don't have the 4K though. All right, let's bring up the next stack. All right, guys, so I'm going to start speeding things up a little bit. I might start showing a few films at a time. Um, and these films, all by the same director, all the same actor. Peter Berg and uh, and uh, Mark Wahlberg. So you got uh, Patriots Day, you got uh, Lone Survivor, and you got Deepwater Horizon. So um, all good films. I enjoy them all. I think out of all of them, the one I like the most was Patriots Day. I thought that was um, the most consistent, uh, thrilling movie of of all of them. Um, and yeah, definitely the best. Definitely the best. Let me get a drink of water. Uh, all right, guys, let's continue. A movie that's getting a remake maybe this year, but it's probably going to get pushed to next year. Steven Spielberg directing it, but this is the classic West Side Story. It's still in the plastic. I have not seen West Side Story, but I heard it's a classic musical, um, and I need to check it out. Next up, guys, Darren Aronofsky film, another one, The Wrestler. I love this movie. This is I, I used to be a huge pro wrestling fan, not so much anymore, but... Um, yeah, this was a really, this really, um, hit me kind of hard when I watched it, just the, the way they portrayed wrestling. It was so true to life. And, um, yeah, I think it's just phenomenal performances all around. Love the movie. Next one up guys, three billboards outside of Ebbing, Missouri. So this is a movie that was really hyped the year it came out and I enjoyed it. I really liked the film. Great performances. Uh, but nobody talks about this movie anymore. Like, almost nobody talks about Three Bill Boards. Like, I never see it posted about, um, talked about. Um, I'm not sure why, but yeah, it was really hyped when it came out. Seven Academy Award nominations. Nobody talks about it anymore at all. I literally see nothing about Three Bill Boards. But it's a really good movie. If you guys haven't checked it out, definitely see it. All right, guys, another three pack. Let's do this. Let's do it. Got a Catherine Bigelow set right here you got detroit zero dark 30 and the hurt locker so i've only seen the hurt locker have not seen the other two yet but the hurt locker is freaking amazing um i just watched it last year and i was like ah oh, this will probably be fine um best picture winner I, I didn't think it was going to meet my expectations and it did like it's really tense and suspenseful and freaking just so stressful <laughs> the entire movie i love it all right let's do it again guys we got three ben affleck films Gone Girl, Argo, and The Town. So I have seen Argo and Gone Girl, but I have not yet watched The Town. So I need to check out The Town at some point. Next one up, guys. And this might be a movie that uh, I honestly may never watch. Gone with the Wind. It's like four hours long. I don't know if I could sit through that. I don't know. Should I? Should I watch Gone with the Wind? If I should, why don't you leave me a comment down below? All right, guys, I need to watch this movie again because I love it when it came out in 2006, but Little Miss Sunshine, great little film, great little film. See, it was funny, back in the day, like this would be considered an indie movie. I used to watch indie movies like back in 2005, 2006, before it was the cool thing to do. I was watching indie movies. Next one up, guys, is Boyhood, Richard Linkletter film. So I have not seen Boyhood yet. Um, but I've heard good things. I've heard good things. Next one up, guys. This is a Big Lots by Joy. Have not seen Joy. This, I think I got at a pawn shop. The Artist. That was a Best Picture winner. That's so weird. Like, nobody talks about this movie either. <laughs> but I guess it was good. Enough to win Best Picture. I don't know. All right, guys. We got Call Me By Your Name. So uh, a lot of people love this film. Um, I, I liked it. I respect the filmmaking style, but a lot of just like the character choices and the acting choices and performances, I, I didn't enjoy. I don't know. I don't know. It's, uh, yeah, it, it was filmed phenomenally. Like uh, Luca Guadagnino did an excellent job. But uh, this is another Luca Guadagnino film, A Bigger Splash. You might see another one of his films pop up. But that's going to be in another genre section. Um, yeah, I haven't, I haven't got a chance to watch Bigger Slash yet, so hopefully soon. 
Uh, I got the usual, usual suspects, and I have seen this. I just watched this for the first time this year, like a few months ago. Um, yeah, I enjoyed the movie. I enjoyed it, but I already knew the twist at the end, um, you know, with Kevin Spacey. So kind of took a little bit of the steam out of it. The Descendants with George Clooney. I know nothing about this other than George Clooney's in it, and I probably need to watch it. He was a quiet man. I remember I bought this at a Dollar Tree because it had um, Christian Slater on the cover. And I haven't seen Christian Slater in a movie in like 20 years. So I bought it just based on that. All right, guys. This is a really good movie from 2016, I believe. Hidden Figures. Really good movie. Definitely check that one out. And now we're getting ready to move into some Quentin Tarantino, guys. We got Kill Bill. Great movie. Like, I go back and forth between this one and uh, the next one, Pulp Fiction, as to which one's my favorite Tarantino film because I love them both, but they're definitely the top two. And we got Jackie Brown. Really great movie. This one's kind of this one's kind of overlooked and underrated. A lot of people put this as their last. That that and Death Proof. I, I really enjoy Jackie Brown. Inglorious Bastards. This one's phenomenal. Definitely near the top of my Quentin Tarantino. Then you got The Hateful Eight. I like this one a lot, too. I know I got some criticism when it came out, but um, I really like this one, too. Oh, I dropped it. All right, and we got the Django Unchained, guys. So, I love the Django. This is freaking great. And, yeah, it would be like this and Inglorious, Kill Bill, Pulp Fiction. Those are like my top four um, Tarantino. So. All right, guys, let me move some of these up. Next one we got is Michael J. Fox in Team Wolf. So, yeah, I don't, I know I've seen this. I don't remember a lot about it. Classic 80s film, The Breakfast Club. Love this movie. Classic. All right, guys, let's, let's get a little bit of dose of uh, Scorsese in here. You got Taxi Driver. Great film. Raging Bull. Pretty good film. Wolf of Wall Street. Great film. Goodfellas. I liked it. I liked it. It's good. The Departed. <laughs> Don't like this movie. Alright. Moving on to Face Off. Face Off is... Crap. It's not good. It's not good. I, I know it's like one of those... Freaking... Um, revered 90s action movies, but I just watched this movie and it's completely ridiculous and not in a good way. I did not enjoy Face Off. Another 1997 film, um, and this is one of my top five comedies of all time, Liar Liar. I can't lie! Freaking great. Love it. The bathroom scene alone, just, it's uh, so many moments like, uh, such a good movie. All right, guys, listen, you want a little Kubrick? You want a little dose of Kubrick? Here we go. Full Metal Jacket. Full Metal Jacket. I have not seen this movie since I was like maybe 13. Um, it, there was like a brief period in my early teens where it was really cool to watch Full Metal Jacket. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I need to revisit it. Next one up, guys, a movie I have not seen. and This is from the director of the new Top Gun coming out, but Oblivion. Uh, with Morgan Freeman. And I still have the Half Price Book sticker on there. So yeah, I didn't rip that sticker off yet. Maybe I'll do that right here. Uh, it might take too much time. Alright guys, The Raid. The Raid. This is one of the best action films in the past 50 years. Or so I've heard, because I've never actually seen the film. <laughs> but yeah, I'll, so many people hype up this movie. This and The Raid too. I definitely need to watch it, because I've heard so so many good things about this. This is not the Swartz you are looking for. Spaceballs. Classic. Classic Star Wars parody. Alright guys, another Craig S. Zoller film, Bone Tomahawk. Great film. Phenomenal film. Um, this is probably my number two from Craig S. Zoller. 
Um, and if you guys are not familiar for, with him, actually, it's S. Craig Zeller. Um, and if you guys aren't familiar with him, he did this. He did uh, Brawl in Cell Block 99. That's my favorite. And he did that Dragged Across Concrete movie. He's a really cool up-and-coming filmmaker. I cannot wait. He's one of those filmmakers that anything he comes out with going forward, I'm going to check out no matter what. No matter what it is, I'm going to check it out. So, yeah, great. All right, guys. So this is the 2019 release, Little Women. And, you know, I saw this in theaters, and I thought it was very traditional, and it was really good, but um, it didn't really hit me beyond that. And then I watched this at home. Um, after I bought it on Blu-ray, and it's like, it's just one of the best movies <laughs> that, I, that I've seen. One of the, it just makes you feel good. Like, the entire time I watch this movie, I feel good. I don't know. I love this movie now, though. This is one of my favorites um, from 2019, for sure. All right, guys. If Beale Street could talk, the, the follow-up to Moonlight for Barry Jenkins, and this is a really great movie. Um, I didn't like it quite as much as Moonlight, but the freaking score in this movie, um, which I think is the same guy that did it in Moonlight. I can't think of his name right now. I wish I could, but the score in this movie, one of the best of, of, uh, of 2018, I believe the year it came out, but yeah, the performances and, uh, you know, to be honest, this film right now could not be any more relevant. So, um, definitely check out if Bill Street could talk. I think it's on Hulu. If you haven't got to check that one out. Next one up, guys, is Guns Akimbo with Daniel Radcliffe. So, yeah, I picked this one up a few weeks ago. I still haven't got a chance to watch it, so hopefully soon. And I got the Wave, the Quake 2-pack. So, I do, fun fact, and you'll notice this as I'm going through my collection, I don't do a lot of 2-packs. I just don't. But I saw this at Walmart for like 12 bucks, so I decided to go ahead and grab it just because I've heard a lot of good things about the Wave. Um, so, I do want to watch that one. Haven't heard anything about the quake, so I have no idea what kind of crap they're trying to pull over on me, um, including that as well. So, yeah, not sure. All right, guys, moving on. So I'm going to get into my Warner Archive collection here, and this is the stuff that Warner Archive has sent me um, to review for them. So I'm really appreciative they have. But I have Ladyhawk, two on a guillotine, which I have not seen yet. Night School, and Warner Archive always does a great job with the covers, but Night School, I really like this movie. This is a highly underrated and underappreciated um, slasher from the 80s. Nobody talks about this. I had never heard of it, and I just I got it from him on a whim, and yeah, I love this movie. That's a great slasher. Don't Be Afraid of the Dark, From Beyond the Grave, which is a really fun kind of anthology horror film. Love the cover on that one, too. The Thing from Another World, definitely not as good as The Thing from John Carpenter, but still good. Um, you got The Fearless Vampire Killers. This was just kind of ridiculous, but it's a Roman Polanski film. Wait Until Dark, which was a really good film with uh, Audrey Hepburn, Alan Arkin, great cast. Um, really good thriller. All right, guys, so now we move on, and we got a 2010 film here, The Fighter. So I haven't seen The Fighter since it came out. So I really liked it, though, back when I watched it in 2010. Next one up, guys. I think I bought this for $5 in a Walmart bin. Jigsaw. It's probably the only way I would have brought it. All right, guys. So the complete opposite of Jigsaw. Phenomenal film from 1997. Global Hunting. Great film. All right, and we have a film from the year I was born, classic comedy, mystery, murder, Clue. Great movie. Moving on, guys, I got some Mill Creek VHS covers that I got. No Mercy, Kim Basinger, Richard Gere. When a Stranger Calls, I really love this cover. That's a great cover. Hudson Hawk, and I just, I, I, I can't, I don't know, I watched this movie, and it, it <laughs> I can't even talk about it, I can't even talk about the movie, um, <laughs> um, yeah, d just watch Hudson Hawk, and get back with me, watch Hudson Hawk, it's ridiculous, Vibes, Jeff Goldblum, Cindy Lauper, Match Made in Heaven. 
I, I don't know who thought this was a good idea. Cover's really cool, though. Thank you, Mill Creek, for sending those to me. Next up, guys, my Paramount Presents collection. As you know, I've recently started collecting these Paramount Presents line. And the first one I got was Fatal Attraction. Elvis, King Creel. To Catch a Thief. Flashdance. And Days of Thunder. And I'll be having Pretty of Pink coming my, coming my way soon. So with that, guys, I got to switch up some Blu-rays. I got to put some Blu-rays back on the shelf. I got to take some more down to the table. So hold on a second. I'll be back. All right, guys. So we're going to keep going here. And the God, I, I, I look behind me and I pulled down about six more stacks and I still got so much to go. But <laughs> this is this is going to be a long video, guys, because I think we're already approaching the 40 minute mark, maybe. Um, and I've, I've got so much more to do. But um, yeah, so I'm going to try to power through the entire thing. But it might be one of those situations where I stop um, and I might pick it up tomorrow, but it's not going to make any difference to you guys. because It's all going to be on here anyway. Um, but the next one up, guys, we're going to get to is the King's Speech. So that is the 2011 Best Picture winner. Uh, the controversial win over the social network. I know a lot of people were upset about that. Next one up is another Robert Zemeckis film, Flight. The Favorite by Yorgos Lanthimos. And this is probably a director I should have his films together, but I don't. But I do have his other films I'll get to. But I really love this movie. It's a great movie from uh, 2018. One of the best. Best Picture nominee, too. Next one up, I have no idea why I own this. The Fault in, in My Stars. Is that it? The Fault in Our Stars. Whoever stars it is. I don't know. I've never seen it. But I've actually heard it's good. I probably shouldn't bash it. But yeah, I haven't seen it. All right, guys, next up, one of my favorites from last year, The Peanut Butter Falcon. Phenomenal adventure, Tom and Huck style, just feel-good movie, Shia LaBeouf. Um, just, just a great movie. This is a great movie. I love it. Next up, guys, The Grand Budapest Hotel. And this is the only Wes Anderson film that I have in my collection. So that's interesting. I know it just came out with a Criterion, but I still like the original, the Blu-ray cover. It's a good cover. Next up, guys, is a Paul Thomas Anderson movie, The Phantom Thread. Phantom Thread. So, um, I watched half of this movie. I watched half of it, and I meant to return to it, but I never got a chance to. It, it's I don't know. It didn't really grab me the first time, but I'm going to try to watch it again. Next up, Denzel Washington and Fences. He directed this movie too. I thought that the performance in this is the performances in this movie were freaking great. They were like he should have won Best Actor. Like I know Casey Affleck won for Manchester by the Sea, and you heard my thoughts earlier on that film. But Denzel Washington, I do not know how you beat him in this performance because he is so freaking good in this movie. Um, the movie itself is kind of like a stage play. Um, the way it's directed, but he's so good in it. He's so good. Moneyball with Brad Pitt, Jonah Hill. Have not seen that movie yet, but I need to. We have another classic here, Fight Club. And yeah, I have the Deadpool cover from Walmart. I don't know how many of you all know these exist, but you're going to be seeing them pop up in my collection. Um, but it is the original movie. It's not like a Deadpool cover of Fight Club, but... Um, yeah, you're going to be seeing Deadpool kind of photobomb my, my Blu-ray collection. The Revenant with Leo DiCaprio, the movie that earned him those first best actor win. I don't know how, because he, he barely talks in the movie. He's like on his back bleeding through the whole movie, but he's best actor. So yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. It's a good movie though. I like it. American History X. American History X. This is a movie... That I vaguely remember. I remember liking it a lot when I first seen it. I was probably a teenager when I saw it last. But I need to rewatch it again. Next up guys. Another Coen Brothers film. A classic Coen Brothers film. Fargo. Love this movie. Great movie. The Natural with Robert Redford. 1984. Have not seen it. Need to. Amadeus. Amadeus from 1984 as well. Um, this is a really good movie. This is a movie that I first watched in music class when I was in high school. And I recently watched it again. 
It's a good biopic. Good biopic for sure. Next up is another Deb Patel, Danny Boyle film, Slumdog Millionaire. Slumdog Millionaire. Slumdog Millionaire. Alright. You're going to see me get a little bit crazier as the time goes on. Because um, it is getting late. But I'm going to try to power through it. Hitchcock. Hitchcock is a movie that is not nearly as interesting as it should be, considering the subject matter. I'll just say that. It's okay. Actually, you know what, guys? I lied. And I might lie a few times in this, but I do have another Wes Anderson film. I Love Dogs. I completely forgot I bought this. <laughs> I bought it like a year ago. Still haven't watched it. Still in the plastic. I have not seen I Love Dogs. So, I don't know if I need to or not. I don't know. It's a mad, mad, mad world. Mad, mad, mad. I might have put a couple too many mads in there. I don't know, but yeah. I um, haven't seen this movie, but I know it's a classic. Need to. Pain and Gain. From what I hear, it's one of the few good Michael Bay movies. That's definitely intriguing with The Rock and Mark Wahlberg. Might need to check that out. The Blind Side with Sandra Bullock. Um, I don't know if she... Did she win Best Actress for this? I don't know. I, to be honest, like this is one of those movies that I'm not even sure I've seen. I feel like I have. Maybe. I think when it come out 2008. I don't know. I don't know. This is a movie that I'm probably going to be watching here soon. I have not seen it, but Selma by Ava DuVernay. Um, yeah, I'm going to be watching this one soon. Just with kind of uh, my... Uh, I'm doing kind of like a black cinema watch on my Instagram. So I reviewed Malcolm X. Um, I reviewed um, uh, Boys in the Hood. So I'm going to review Selma pretty soon, but I'm excited to watch that one. This is where I leave you. Um, I've heard good things about this, but I haven't seen it yet. Adam Driver, uh, Tina Fey. It's got a great cast. Phenomenal cast. Bubble. Aaron Sorkin movie. It's weird. Bubble. Has anybody seen Bubble? I don't know. I found it at the Dollar Tree. Pretty sure that's where I found that. All right. We're going to be finishing up my drama films, and then we're going to be moving into comedies. So next one is a classic, Casablanca. What could he say? This is the template for the freaking romantic, the romance film. This is just a great film. It's a classic film. Oh, Deadpool's back, guys. Deadpool photobomb, and now he's dressed up like Wilson from Castaway. I love Castaway. This is honestly my favorite Tom Hanks film. Um, Robert Zemeckis also directed this. And yeah, this is my favorite Tom Hanks film. I love Castaway. Red Dawn. This is the remake. I think. No, this is the original. It's the 1984 film. I feel like I own the remake too, but we'll find out. We'll find out. That's okay movie. I don't love it. Tom Cruise movie, Rock of Ages. Rock of Ages. I love the song. have never seen the movie. Um, I actually heard it was kind of garbage, but I don't know. You tell me. Dunkirk. Christopher Nolan. Tom Hardy. A bunch of people fighting in war and stuff. I don't know. It, it's okay. I don't love Dunkirk. It's a technical masterpiece. Um, but to me, 1917 proved that you could do a technical masterpiece and also tell a good story. And this one did not do that other part. So, 1917 kind of makes this one look worse for me. That's Dunkirk. Seven. David Fincher. Yep. This is one of those really cool kind of Warner uh, collection icons collection series. Blu-ray slipcovers. Yeah. Really love that. This is a great movie. I watched it recently for the first time. I know, I know. I can't believe I watched it for the first time recently, but I freaking loved it. The ending just blew my mind. Even though I knew it was going to happen, blew my mind anyway. Love it. Place Beyond the Pines. This is an underrated movie. This is a really underrated movie. Nobody talks about this one. I love it. I love it. It's a little long. I can understand why some people don't like it because it, it kind of... Um, you know, breaks the movie into three distinct parts, and it kind of changes up tones and styles. But yeah, I really love it. Ryan Gosling's great in it. Bradley Cooper as well. Classic war film, Platoon. 
with uh, Willem Dafoe, I'm pretty sure. And this was the Best Picture winner. Another great movie, guys, Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler with Jake Gyllenhaal. This is a phenomenal movie. This is in my, I think it was in my top 15 of the entire decade. Love this movie. Phenomenal. One of uh, Bill Paxton's last movies also. Another great movie, guys, Prisoners. Jake Gyllenhaal. Jake Gyllenhaal has to be one of the best actors of the past decade, hands down. Like, he's in so many of my favorite movies from the past decade. But Hugh Jackman in this movie, best performance he's ever given. Freaking great. If you have not seen it, directed by Denis Villeneuve. I haven't even mentioned that yet. Um, but yeah, this this is such a heartbreaking, just devastating movie, thriller uh, mystery, whatever you want to call it, but it's freaking, it will blow your mind. The Secret Life of Walter Mitty. Me and my wife actually started watching this on Amazon Prime like a few months back, and we didn't get to the end of it. I don't know. It got really just kooky. It got really kooky. That's the only thing I can say. Bridge of Spies, another Steven Spielberg film. Tom Hanks. Definitely need to check this one out because I've heard a lot of great things. Next one, guys, uh, Clint Eastwood film. Is it directed by Clint Eastwood? Or maybe just starring Clint Eastwood. Hang him high. Hang him high. I don't know how I got this uh, card on the front of it, but yeah, hang him high, Clint Eastwood. I haven't seen it. Hostels. And, uh, you know, I haven't seen this movie either, but I know that the director of it is coming out with a horror film this year, Antlers. Um, so I'm probably going to watch this before that movie comes out. If it ever comes out, it'll probably come out on BOD. Best Picture winner, guys. Another Best Picture winner. We got The Shape of Water. I like this movie. It's visually, it's very good. Um, but Guillermo del Toro, sometimes um, he, he can tell a good story. Sometimes he provides a little bit more style than substance, though, if that makes any sense. Um, and I'll be watching Pan's Labyrinth soon because I ordered the 4K, so... I don't know. DRML doesn't always land with me, and I thought this was good, but I don't think it deserved best picture. That's just my opinion, though. All right, guys. So we're moving into the comedies. We got Beverly Hills Cop, classic 1984 comedy, starring one of the best comedians of all time, Eddie Murphy. So this is a really fun buddy cop movie. Um, that's all I got to say about it. Um, the score, though, dun, 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 dun. that's one of my favorites. Another classic comedy, guys. This is probably in my top ten comedies of all time. Uh, Mrs. Doubtfire. Robin Williams. It is my favorite Robin Williams film, hands down. Love it. Classic movie from my childhood. All right, guys. So, two Austin Powers. Two Austin Powers films. I was trying to think of something clever to say for Austin Powers, and I couldn't. One billion dollars. All right, there you go. I'm done. I, and I don't have Gold Member. Um, I've only seen Gold Member once, so I don't have fond memories of it. I thought it was okay. Um, but I've heard a lot of people say it holds up better than um, you might think. So I might need to watch that again. Some more Deadpool, guys. Office Space. Now, this is in my top five comedies of all time as well. I love Office Space. Great comedy from the 1999. Uh, 2006 drama comedy. I don't. I don't know what exactly we watched. It's a good movie though. Devil Wears Prada. Got another Deadpool right there. <laughs> these are really cool slipcovers, guys. I probably uh, does anybody remember these Deadpool slipcovers? If you do, comment down below. Just let me a comment right now. Um, I, just, I need to know if anybody else bought these. I need to know. All right, guys. We have another uh, title. Paris G. Uh, something. I don't know. I think I got this as Dollar Tree. Paper Towns. Never seen it. Never seen Paper Towns. Classic comedy. The Jerk. Steve Martin. Haven't seen this movie in forever, but I remember loving it as a kid. Need to watch The Jerk again. Classic Richard Linkletter film. One of the best coming-of-age movies of all time. Dazed and Confused. Also one of the best stoner movies. So... Um, yeah, this is a great movie. Um, it's one that I honestly haven't seen in a really long time. I need to check that out again, though. All right, guys, let me get a drink here. All right. 
moving on. One a comedy that everybody loved last year. I thought it was okay. Booksmart. It was very much the females super bad. Um, but I didn't think they did enough outside the box stuff. Like they didn't really do anything new other than just it's a female super bad. And I was kind of hoping for more given how much praise it got. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm just being sexist. Who knows? But I thought it was okay. It was okay. Good movie. All right, Jack Nicholson, Morgan Freeman, The Bucket List. Have not seen The Bucket List. A movie I have seen is a classic 90s rom-com teen movie. Can't hardly wait. I love this slipcover, dude. This came out like two years ago, I think. But this is an awesome slipcover. Awesome movie. I think it's on Netflix right now. So if you have not seen Can't Hardly Wait and you grew up in the 90s, watch this movie. You'll love it. You'll appreciate it. Another Deadpool, Revenge of the Nerds. There we go. I feel like I got to pull the actual cover out. Y'all just think I'm, I'm lying about the movie. Role Models, 2008 comedy. Love this movie. Really, really funny. Uh, Paul Rudd, um, Sean William Scott. One of the last like big notable roles that Sean William Scott did. I don't know what he did to Hollywood, but he, they just stopped putting him in movies after this. So yeah, it's kind of interesting. All right, guys. We got a retro VHS slipcover sighting. We got The Sandlot classic kids movie in the vein of the of the goonies and stand by me you got the sandlot all right another classic 80s movie say anything john cusack i need to watch this again it's been such a long time i am such a sucker for these type of 80s teen um romantic comedies like i love all of them like say anything lover boy um can't buy me love all those movies i love Spike Lee film guys, School Days. So this is the one that he made right before Do the Right Thing. I haven't watched it yet, but I saw this at Best Buy and I went and bought it. It was about a year or so ago. Um, but I need to watch uh, School Days for sure. All right, guys. Next one up is Edgar Wright film, Shaun of the Dead. Shaun of the Dead. So I'm pretty sure I've already shown this off in my still books, but yeah, it's a great movie. I need to rewatch it. The Other Guys with Mark Wahlberg and Will Ferrell. I actually remember this movie. It's got Michael Keaton in it. I remember this actually being pretty funny. It looked really stupid. I remember it actually being pretty funny. And I remember Michael Keaton kind of uh, stealing the show in this one. I don't know. Tell me what you think. This is another one in my top five favorite comedies. You got a 40-year-old virgin. I love a 40-year-old virgin. This is what made me fall in love with Steve Carell. Um, and, of course, The Office as well. But I didn't like The Office until much later. But yeah, um, it's it's so good. I love this movie. Love it. Now you see me. Now you don't. Um, I haven't seen this movie yet. So I guess I don't see it. Yeah. Alright, so I got one of these weird... You're going to be seeing a lot of these slipcover variants because sometimes I'll just go to Walmart and they'll have cool stuff out. And I, and I buy it just because it has a different slipcover. But 21 Jump Street has like a Christmas sweater slipcover. Um, yeah, I must have bought that during Christmas. And it actually has November 2017 on it. So I bought this three years ago almost. Around Christmas time. Super bad. Another one that's in my top five favorite comedies of all time. I think I might own all my top five. I've gone through four of them so far. So we'll see if we get the fifth one. See if we get the fifth one. All right, guys. Let's go ahead and show them up. Milf, milf, milf. American Pie. Let's see, we got American Pie. American Pie 2. American Reunion. I don't own American Wedding. Don't know. Because I found American Pie, American Pie 2, I think a half price books with the slipcovers. And then I found American Reunion at a uh, Dollar General. So I need I have to seek out American Wedding to complete the set. Alright, guys. So we've got another two pack right here. Um I am Ron Burgundy. Anchorman and Anchorman 2. Um Anchorman, I love Anchorman 2. I've only seen once, and I like the movie. Um, can't say I love it though. Baywatch. This was a steaming pile of horse shit. And that and that's being nice. It's being nice. 
All right. Big, classic Tom Hanks movie. I love Big. Um, I need to rewatch it, though. Need to rewatch it soon. Love that slipcover. All right, guys. This is one of my top five favorite comedies, but this is one that I come to love and appreciate even more every single time I've seen it. 2009 comedy, I Love You, Man, with uh, Jason Segel, Paul Rudd. This is freaking hilarious. Every time I watch this movie, I find something new to love about it, and it just gets... It gets better every time I watch it. I don't know what it is. I love that movie, though. Romancing the Stone. Another Robert Zemeckis movie. Just Getting Started. Another Old Guys Doing Crazy Things movie. Got two uh, retro VHS slipcovers. You got uh, Roxanne and Neighbors. So I like these covers. I like this this VHS slipcover series. So anytime that Mill Creek releases those, I buy them just because I like I like them. Just like having them. All right, so let's continue with the VHS slips. You got meatballs, and you got young guns. Really cool covers. Haven't seen the movies though. Eddie the Eagle. This is a really good movie from 2016. Hugh Jackman, um, Terrence Taron Edgerton. Yeah, really fun, inspirational kind of heartwarming movie. I like that movie. Game Night, one of the best comedies in the past few years, and that I mean it's not saying a bunch. This is it's a really good movie. Um, they just don't make good comedies anymore, but this is one of the good ones. So watch Game Night if you haven't seen it. Another classic comedy from two thousand eight, Step Brothers. Step Brothers, Will Ferrell, um, John C. Riley, yeah, super funny. Wedding Crasher. So this is this movie was like. All the rage back in 2005. Everybody freaking loved this. It became a cultural phenomenon. Um, but yeah, it's super funny. I need to rewatch it, see how it holds up. But yeah, I love Wedding Crashers. Next one, I'm not sure if this is a comedy or not. Don John, George and Gordon led it. Scarlett Johansson. I haven't seen it. So um, yeah, let me know if that's a comedy. This is actually written and directed by Joseph Gordon led it. I'm finding that out right now for the first time. All right, guys. This is a really good movie, kind of coming of age movie. Dope. I don't know if anybody's ever seen Dope. Um, watched it a few years ago. Yeah, really good movie. Check it out. Dude, where's my Blu ray? Where's my Blu ray, dude? Dude, where's my car? I don't, I don't know what I'm doing anymore, guys. You're going to, like I said, you're going to see me getting a little, <laughs> a little bit crazier as I go through these. Um, but yeah, you know, hopefully I'll get my second win soon and I'll, I'll come back strong for you guys and we'll finish strong. The five year engagement. This is actually, if I remember correctly, I think I've seen this guy, Chris Pratt in it. I didn't even remember that. I think this is pretty good though. All right. Thank God. I remember liking that movie. This one I know I love freaking love this movie. It's hilarious. Uh, forgetting Sarah Marshall, Jason Siegel, um, Russell Brand, uh, Mila Kunis, just excellent, excellent cast, hilarious movie. I love that movie. Easy A with Emma Stone. Uh, yeah, she's she's so freaking good in this movie. This is kind of where she broke out in her career. It's like her first big starring role. She nailed it, nailed it. Enough said. I've never seen this. It's got Soprano in it though, and and Elaine from Seinfeld. So man, it might be all right. I don't know. This movie I know I've seen once, and I remember uh, I don't I honestly don't know what to think about it. Youth in Revolt with Michael Sarah. That was back when they were trying to make Michael Sarah a thing, and trying to give him a career beyond just super bad. And well, I guess he had Scott Pilgrim too. Um, that's kind of a cult classic. I don't know. I don't remember much about this movie. I remember it being okay. Might be one I need to revisit though. Youth in Revolt. I got another Christmas sweater one here, and that is This Is The End. This movie is... I I can't say I love it. I can say one thing about it. I love the first um, 30 minutes of the movie. I love the way it starts. I love the, the meta-ness of it with all, all the actors being at James Franco's house. Um, and just uh, the, the initial, like, when the world ends and all that stuff happens. It's really funny, like, the first 30, 45 minutes. And it kind of goes off the rails for me a little bit. I don't love it um, in the second half, if I remember correctly. But I need to rewatch it again. 
it, it's one of those movies that I've honestly seen the first 30 minutes like 10 times maybe because it's the funniest part and then I always just turn it off but this is the end is pretty good Another movie. This is this is a really fun movie. Kind of, I would say this is like an action comedy, um, really violent action comedy. Pineapple Express, um, from two thousand and eight, and yeah, I love this movie. Um, yeah, really, really hilarious stoner action violent movie. So yeah, really good movie. And I thought I thought Hurricane Season was over. I thought Hurricane Season was over. I don't know. I'm just gonna quote obscure lines from movies, and maybe you guys will pick up on it. Take me home tonight. Uh, take me home tonight, Topher Grace and Anna Ferris. Yeah. I know I've seen this. I don't remember too much about it, though. And we got The Hangover. Classic comedy. Love this movie. Freaking great. And then you got The Hangover Part 2, which is a steaming pile of dog shit. Um, but yeah, and that's being nice. That is being nice. Oh, God, man. I'm getting some really good comedies here. I've got a good collection of comedies. I need to watch these. I need to feel good. Tropic Thunder. Really, it's hilarious. This, just for Robert Downey Jr. alone. and You can give me all the criticism you want about blackface, but it's really not about that. Um, he's making fun of actors. He's not making fun of black people in that performance. So... Um, I don't see how he gets any criticism for it, but he's so freaking hilarious in that role. Um, just everybody's good in this movie. Jack Black's good in the movie. Um, ben Stiller and Tom Cruise. Like, how could I forget about Tom Cruise? Um, his his part in it is like the most like different. I think Tom Cruise has ever been in any movie because he's always playing like the same type of character, and he was actually like different <laughs> in Tro- Tropic Thunder. I don't know. Watch Tropic Thunder. Another great one, 1998, I believe. There's something about Mary, Ben Stiller, Cameron Diaz. Uh, this is so good. I need to watch that one again. This is another Judd Apatow comedy, and I really like this movie. This is 40. This is one that actually me and my wife watch every couple years. Like, we both love it. Um, so we'll just be like, what do we watch tonight? And we'll be like, let's watch This is 40 again for like the 10th time. So. We both love it. I love Paul Rudd, um, Leslie Mann. They're really good as a married couple. Um, and it just gives you that really good, like, married couple humor that, you know, it, it is fun to watch as a couple. So um, that's a good movie. The only criticism I have, it's the same as with all Judd Apatow movies. It's a little too long. But, you know, he, he takes his time to tell a story. I mean, you know, some people do that. Um, another movie, guys, I remember, I remember thinking this was okay. It was pretty good, but it got like a 10 on Rotten Tomatoes or something. Let's be cops. Um, I remember laughing. Um, we got Damon Wayne's son in it. Yeah, I remember laughing, having a good time. That's harmless. Super Troopers. Call Ramrod. Um, Broken Lizard Super Troopers. So I like this movie. I like their follow-up though, Beer Fest, a little bit better. Um, but I do like Super Troopers. Papal, Paper Heart with Michael Sarah. Never heard of this one. So I guess that's what he did after he um, did uh, Youth and Revolt. Maybe he did Paper Heart. I don't know. I don't know. Never seen him. This one, guys, love Simon. Just a, This is a really good movie. A really good coming of age movie that kind of uh, handles the material of, of the gay teen just better than any other movie has before. Um, it just, it handles it in a way that it's not like beating you over the head with like message after message. Um, I don't know. It just does it in a really natural, um, natural way. And to be honest, how most films should handle it. Like it's just, it's, it's just a really good movie. It's a really good story. I highly recommend that one. And you got blockers. Great comedy from uh, 2018. And yes, I say great. I laughed at this movie quite a bit. I liked it. Um, it it's, to me, it's about as good as Game Night, in my opinion. Alright, guys. So, we're getting ready to get to some, what I would now call my sci-fi stack. Even though some of these films aren't entirely sci-fi. Um, but yeah, I would call it my, uh, my sci-fi stack. So, we got War from the Planet of the Apes. 
And yeah, I'm going to do this backwards because that's how I have them stacked. You got Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Rise of the Planet of the Apes. So these are all really good movies. This trilogy is really solid. Um, definitely one of the best trilogies in the past 20 years. But yeah, it's I've heard they're making a fourth film. I don't think they need to. Um, I think this stands as a really solid trilogy. So they should leave it at that. Another VHS slipcover of Cruel. I have not seen Cruel. I don't know if it's any good or not. It's a cool cover. The Last Starfighter, classic 1984 film. Haven't checked this one out either, but I've heard really good things. Total Recall, the remake with Colin Farrell. I remember liking this one okay, but it did not stand up to the, the original. Not at all. The Circle, Tom Hanks and Emma Watson? Yeah, that's her name, right? I haven't seen this, but I heard it's pretty bad. I heard it's not good. Another movie that I know is not good, After Earth, M. Night Shyamalan. Terrible. And this one's okay. It's okay. I didn't hate it. The Predator. I didn't hate it. It was fun. Um, it, it's a little goofy, but it was fun. It was a fun movie. I remember I had a good time watching it in theater. Predators, um, directed by, I thought this was directed by Robert Rodriguez. Maybe it was just produced by him. This is okay. This is okay from what I remember. I haven't seen it in a while, though. And you got Predator, the Blu-ray. I have the 4K as well. Everybody says this transfer sucks, but I haven't watched it yet. Classic Kubrick right here, Clockwork Orange. And believe it or not, I have still not seen the film. I need to watch it. I know. Chronicle. This is a really good movie from 2012. Um, directed by Josh Trank, who just did recently Capone. He also did Fan 4 Stick, which I think I have in here somewhere too. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is a really solid uh, original superhero film that's done in the found footage genre as well. So it's doing a lot of different things at once and it handles them all really well. It's just a really cool movie. So check out Chronicle if you haven't. Classic Spielberg right here. Close Encounters of the Third Kind. So I really like this movie. I don't love it, but it's really cool. Um, it definitely inspired so many sci-fi films after it, I think, um, just with the things that it did. Um, definitely the intellectual sci-fi film it inspired, for sure. Um, a film that Steven Spielberg's Definitely inspired, I don't know, in the vein of Close Encounters, but Super 8 um, by J.J. Abrams. Um, I haven't seen this movie since it came out. I remember liking it. I remember liking it, I think. I'll have to rewatch it, though. Matt Damon and the Martian. This movie's okay. It's okay. It's not a comedy, though. Sorry, Golden Globes. All right, guys. So we got uh, Cloverfield. 10 Cloverfield Lane. Two movies that could not be any more different, but they're set in the same universe. Um, so I, I love them both for different reasons. Cloverfield's an excellent monster movie in the found, found footage genre. Um, 10 Cloverfield Lane's like a confined, claustrophobic thriller um, that's also set in like a post-apocalyptic time. But yeah, they're both really good. And we got Matrix Reloaded. Yep, I don't think I have the original Matrix on Blu-ray. I don't know. We got Resident Evil Afterlife and Resident Evil. So yeah, those are the only two I own on Blu-ray. My collection's weird, guys. I'm telling you. Pacific Rim. The original one. Guillermo del Toro. And we got a movie that I still have yet to see. Snowpiercer. I know it's got a TV series now. Bong Joon Ho's all the rage with Parasite. Still have not seen it, but this one's cool because it kind of has that uh, um, opening in the front, kind of like those Paramount Col Presents collections. So that's cool. Let's bring the last stack over, guys. All right. So I haven't seen this either, but I heard everybody raves about this movie. I need to watch it. Dread. Got Dread. And we got Live, Die, Repeat, or Edge of Tomorrow, whatever you want to call it. This is a really good sci-fi film with Tom Cruise and Emily Blunt from a couple years ago. Great movie. 
Bumblebee the only, what I would say, good Transformer movie? Yeah, the, the first one's okay. The rest of them are freaking terrible, though. Speaking of the rest of them, The Last Night. I own this, but I haven't seen it, and I won't watch it. I won't watch it, but I have it in my collection because I think about it on Black Friday. Transformers Dark of the Moon. I don't, I don't know if I've seen that one either. I think I might have seen half of it and turned it off. Revenge of the Fallen. Now, this this movie, I'm going to say, comp- made me completely lose faith in movies. And this almost single-handedly led to um, my decline in theater going and movie watching. Because back in 2009, I was kind of, I was big into gaming. I gamed a lot. So I was kind of not into movies that much anyway. And I remember I went and seen this and I said, if this is the shit that makes like <laughs> the most popular blockbuster um, of the world, if this is what the movies are promoting as like the biggest movie of the year, then I don't, I don't need to see these. I don't need to see movies anymore. And I remember I didn't go to the movies for like six months after I saw this. Such a piece of shit. I hate it. I hate it. All right. Transformers. This one's okay. I like this one, alright. Didn't have the same reaction as I did with the second one when I saw it. Sure, Star Trek Into Darkness. Still have not seen this one. Um, but I know a lot of people don't like it. That's a cool slipcover, though. Cool slipcover. And the first Transformers. Or not Transformers. It's the first Star Trek by J.J. Abrams. You got more Star Trek here with the Wrath of Khan. Part 2. Fun fact, I'm not really into Star Trek. Somebody at work gave me all these Star Trek uh, Blu-rays. So there you go. Because I will take anything somebody offer me. Is that Star Trek? Yeah, Star Trek 6, The Undiscovered Country. I, don't, I never hear anybody talk about that one. Life. This Nobody talks about this one. This is a really good sci-fi film. Sci-fi horror almost. Um, from 2017? Yeah, I really like this movie. I remember seeing it in theaters. I haven't watched it on Blu-ray yet, though. Another great sci-fi movie from 2012, Looper. Ryan Johnson, of course, from The Last Jedi, Knives Out, did this movie. Um, really smart, entertaining, just super good um, sci-fi movie. Classic sci-fi movie, RoboCop. RoboCop. I would definitely buy this for a dollar, and I think I did. I think I actually did. I think I got that at Dollar Tree. <laughs> the remake, RoboCop. And I haven't seen this one. Still in the plastic. Uh, I don't know. I don't, I'm sure I'll watch it at some point. Um, and I'm sure I'm going to be watching this one over and over again for years to come. The Happening. Mark Wahlberg, M. Night Shyamalan. This is a modern masterpiece of our time. One of the best films ever made. So good. What? No. So good. Highlander. There could be only one. I've never seen Highlander. (laughs) Gravity. This is one of the best films of 2013. Probably my favorite film. I think this, yeah, this is my top 10 of of the last decade. I love Gravity. It's... It gets me on edge every single time I watch it. Inception, classic Nolan film. I like the movie. I don't love it. Don't love it. I know that's a blast for me to say, but it's true. Independence Day. Yeah, I don't have anything to say about it. I, I love Independence Day, but I, I, I don't know. Alien Resurrection. Aliens. Alien, Alien Covenant, Prometheus. There you go, guys. It's on my Alien film. So out of all those, um, Alien's my favorite. Alien is my favorite. Okay. All right, guys. Going to take a little break. Get some more movies out here. I'll be back. All right, guys. So we are approaching the 75-minute mark, and I really don't want this to go over two hours, even though I know at this point it probably will be because I'm only halfway through. So I'm going to start blasting through these a little bit faster than I have been. But um, so let's go ahead and get into it, guys. Again, 
Got another sci-fi film, District 9. Uh, Neil Blomkamp's first film. I really enjoyed that one, but I need to rewatch it. Elysium, which is another Neil Blomkamp film. Um, I have not seen this one. I haven't seen Chappie either, but I don't own Chappie. The Endless. This is one I bought because it got a lot of praise, and I didn't really enjoy it that much, to be honest. A sci-fi film I do love. One of the best films of the last decade, Arrival. Denis Villeneuve. Excellent, excellent sci-fi film. Another excellent action sci-fi upgrade. So, from the director of The Invisible Man. If you have not seen Upgrade, this is such a underseen gem from 2018. Great film. All right, guys. You ready for some Terminator? We got The Terminator. Great kind of horror film. You got T2. I have this uh, retro VHS cover. This is an awesome cover. I've got Terminator 3. Rise of the Machines. Terminator Salvation. And um, fun fact about this one. This is the first Blu-ray I've ever bought. I think I bought this in Tropic Thunder um, at the same time. So that would have been back in like 2009. Um, so yeah, this is one of the first Blu-rays I ever owned was Terminator Salvation. Terminator Genesis. We won't talk about that one. And we got another uh, one of the best films from the last uh, 10 years, Mad Max Fury Road. Um, I know a lot of people were disappointed I didn't include this in my top 25 of the decade. I really appreciate the film, but don't love it like some people do. World War Z with Brad Pitt. Really, really cool zombie film. A lot better than I think the trailers made it out to be. All right, guys, you ready for some Cage? We got some Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider. I, I don't even know why I own this, to be honest. I, I don't I don't remember liking the movie. Uh, the Punisher with Thomas Jane. Um, I remember actually thinking this was pretty good. Of course, the, uh, the Netflix Punisher is better. Uh, Punisher Warzone. I haven't seen this one. I haven't seen this one yet. And we got <laughs> Elektra. Electra. I haven't seen Electra either. Um, I've heard horrible things about it. But the, the cover was cool at Walmart, so I bought it. Um, Daredevil. Ben Affleck's Daredevil. Another one I bought at Walmart because it was $6 and had a cool slipcover. Yeah, I have seen that one. Um, I, I like that one okay. Hellboy. Guillermo del Toro. I'm not a huge fan of the Hellboy movies. Um, and we got Hellboy 2, The Golden Army. Yeah, I, I like them. I'm not a big fan of them, though. A movie that I am a big fan of, Deadpool. Got Deadpool on Blu-ray. Great movie. We got Deadpool 2. I have the Target Edition one. So this one comes with the... I'll go ahead and make this fast. But this comes with like a little um, old-school storybook in it. So that's really cool. Deadpool 2. Really fun sequel. Not as good as the first, but it's fun. All right. Dark Man. Got this for 3 bucks at... at uh, 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 big Lots, Big Lots. So this is a, a Sam Raimi movie, and this is kind of underrated. Not a lot of people talk about Dark Man. The Amazing Spider-Man 2. You know, believe it or not, I saw this in theater. I took my son to see it uh, when he was like three or four. Um, it's one of the first movies he sat through in the theater and didn't really, and kind of just watched it and engaged with it. I enjoy, Sp the, I enjoy The Amazing Spider-Man 2. It's not great. I definitely like it better than the first Amazing Spider-Man, which is an unpopular opinion. Um, for the first Sam Raimi Spider-Man right here, guys. Uh, this is a classic. This is one of the, this is like the beginning of, uh, Hollywood taking superhero films seriously, I would say. Um, at least with Marvel. And this is just, this might be my favorite comic book movie of all time. You know, I go back and forth between this, Logan, The Dark Knight, um, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. I love this movie. This is like one of my favorite movies from the past 10 years. Great film. Another great superhero movie or super villain movie from last year, Joker, the Target Edition slipcover. This is an awesome slipcover. I love this. I love that slipcover. Another. This is this was a lot of people's favorite of the past decade, Parasite, on Blu-ray. Yeah, uh, definitely number one on a lot of lists from last year, and for good reason. It's a great film. A movie that's not a great film. Another Nicolas Cage movie, Color Out of Space. I didn't like this one that much. A lot of people praise it. I didn't like it. Movie I did like, but I, I liked it a little less the second time I saw it was Ryan Johnson's Knives Out. 
It's a good movie. It's a good movie, though. Um, cool little booklet in there with it. Also got the Target Edition. That's the thing with these Target Editions. Like, I like collecting the Target Editions because of the little booklets that they give out. Little, I don't know. I see more value out of owning, like, a booklet than just having the steel book. I don't know. Tell me what you think. All right. I got somehow 4K made it in here, but I got Spider-Man Far From Home 4K. I think I already showed that one off. But yeah, I think it's because I put some of my 4Ks in with my regular Blu-rays if they're uh, connected. But, you know, we're getting into superhero films uh, now, guys. And I know we've already covered some, but um, we got Captain America, The Winter Soldier. Captain America, Civil War. And I actually have the first Avenger, but that's a steel book. I don't have the Blu-ray of it. We have Spider-Man Homecoming. All MCU films now. Avengers Age of Ultron. And this one's cool. I found this at a Goodwill, but this has like the red Blu-ray. You don't see that too often, but that's kind of cool. Uh, Iron Man 2. Not a good movie. <laughs> Marvel's The Avengers. This is like the original slipcover, so I bought this when it first uh, came out. Yeah. That's a Target exclusive, I think. Uh, the Incredible Hulk. I bought this kind of re-release from a couple years ago because I didn't own it. I actually like this movie. It's not like really great, but I like it. It's definitely better than Ang Lee's movie. Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Um, both are really fun. I like both of them, but definitely the first one's better. The original Thor. found this one at a pawn shop with a slipcover. I was really excited to have that. The first Iron Man. Iron Man 3, Captain Marvel on 4K. All right, so some different kind of comic book movies. You got uh, you got uh, two uh, Kingsman films, Kingsman: The Secret Service and Kingsman: Golden Circle. I ha I I haven't seen. I watched a little bit of Kingsman. I didn't get to get to finish it though. Um, I need to at some point. It's not because it was bad. I don't know. Something pulled me away from it, and I never got back. Uh, what some would say was the beginning of the Marvel kickoff, Blade, 1998, the first, like, big budget Marvel movie to come out. A lot of people don't talk about the fact that it's Marvel, but yeah, I, lo I love Blade. I think it's great. I think it holds up, too. Uh, X-Men, Days of Future Past. Really good comic book movie. X-Men Apocalypse. I like this one more than most. Um, I recognize its faults, but yeah, I like that movie. Um, this is the entire X-Men uh, Wolverine set. I think it's a six-film set. Um, but it has X-Men, X-2, X-Men The Last Stands, X-Men Origins Wolverine, X-Men First Class, and The Wolverine. So, um, yeah, that's a cool set. It's a cool set. So, next one up, guys. The best of all the X-Men films, in my opinion. Uh, one of the best comic book movies ever made, Logan. Just an incredible send-off for Hugh Jackman as the character. Next up, guys, another Josh Trank film, Fan Four Stick. So, um, I need to buy those old Fantastic Four movies because I enjoyed them. I remember when I when I watched them, I need to rewatch them again. This one's terrible. <laughs> it's absolutely terrible. All right, super. I think I got this at a Dollar Tree for a buck. This is actually pretty fun. It's an early James Gunn movie. Um, really dark, really kind of twisted, but it's yeah, it's it's a good movie. Zack Snyder's 300. Got this cool little Warner Icons collectible. Cool movie. Uh, the Dark Knight Trilogy. So I like this little set right here. I do want to own them all um, on 4K at some point. So yeah. Let's go into some more super superhero films. We're getting into some DC. Got the, the um, Death of Superman. And this is the only DC animated film I own. I haven't seen any of those, to be honest. Um, I need to watch more. Batman. Got this cool kind of Lego lenticular cover at Walmart. Um, and I didn't own Batman, so I went and bought it. It's cool. Like I said, Batman Returns. Another 4K made its way into the stack. Love Batman Returns. Um, one of the best superhero films ever made, in my opinion. And the best Superman film. I love this movie, Man of Steel. I'm sorry, I know the Christopher Reeve fans are going to come at me, but um, that's the definitive version of Superman to me, in my opinion. Um, Batman v Superman, I like this movie. Um, another movie I recognize the faults. I know I, some people don't like it, but I like this movie. It's good. 
and that's the ultimate edition. Um, Suicide Squad. I haven't seen this movie since the theaters. Um, I know it gets criticized a lot, and a lot of people don't like it. Um, but a lot of people do. Um, I'm kind of in the middle on it. I like certain aspects of it. I like Will Smith and Margot Robbie in it. Um, but yeah, it gets a little ridiculous with the Enchantress stuff. Um, a movie that it was, is just fine to me, um, Justice League. And of course, everybody's going to be talking about this and the Snyder Cut and all that stuff now. Um, to be honest, I think they should just leave it alone and not do it. it just, just don't worry about it. Um, you know, Maybe release it on Blu-ray or something. I don't see why it has to be like an event. That's just my opinion. Shazam! Cool little lenticular cover. I actually like this one a lot. Um, and I went with this over the 4K just because I like this cover more than the 4K. Wonder Woman on Blu-ray. And I actually have three editions of Wonder Woman. I have the Target, I have the Best Buy Steelbook, and I have the Blu-ray. So I need to get the 4K and just have all of them. Alright guys, so now we're done with superheroes. We're getting into some horror films. So the next... Um, all the next ones I'm going over are some horror films. So um, you got The Conjuring, classic, uh, modern classic horror film from 2013. What some would say is one of the best um, horror films in recent years and kind of kick-started the, the upward trend that we're seeing now with horror. The Conjuring 2, I love The Conjuring 2. I know it's not as good as The Conjuring, but it's almost just as good as The Conjuring. I love this one. Annabelle Creation, the only good Annabelle movie. Um, I didn't like the other two that much. The Nun, uh, this one wasn't good. This wasn't good, but it was cheap at Target, so I bought it. And I just want to own all those, uh, the James Wanaverse movies. Um, three movies that I think are a um, classic, or are going to be looked at as like a classic trilogy, the best horror trilogy, in my opinion, as far as just the quality of all three movies, Paranormal Activity. Yeah, so I don't include like four, five, and six in, in what I say. The parent, but these three paranormal activity films are freaking great, amazing. I love them. So come at me on that. <laughs> Ouija Origin of Evil. So this is the prequel to the first Ouija, which a lot of people say is horrible. I haven't seen it, um, but I really like this movie. It's Mike Flanagan did this, who did Doctor Sleep and Hush on Netflix, Gerald's Game, uh, Haunting of Hill, ha Hill House. He's a great director. Um, and this movie is really, really solid uh, horror movie right here. And I got Paranormal Activity 2, just a standalone of this one. I like this one a lot. Um, it's probably my least favorite of the three, but it's still really good. Um, this one, to me, this is one of the best horror films of the 21st century. I put this as, like, number two behind The Witch. Um, like, Top 3 Witch and uh, another one I'll go over later and get out. Uh, but, yeah. Paranormal Activity, and this is a really cool slipcover. Walmart had these additions. Like, Walmart just does this crap sometimes. They don't even promote it. They just, I'll go into Walmart, and I'll see all these real cool additions in there. And, you know, some of them I just buy. So, yeah, this is a really cool one. I like that one. Next up, guys, Devil's Do. I haven't seen it, but this was, uh, you're going to be seeing a lot of these, like, Dollar General. You'll see, like, the $4.95 um, pickups that I haven't even opened yet. But Dollar General, a couple years in a row, did, had this thing where they were like marked down 50% off. And then when you went to check out, they would mark down another 50%. So they had movies for basically $1.25 there. And they had all kinds of movies that I just stocked up on. Like I got like 100 Blu-rays uh, between the two years. And they didn't do it last year. So I, I think they realized the error of their ways. But yeah, getting movies for $1.25, that really helped expand my Blu-ray collection. So... Uh, this movie I bought just kind of on a whim, Leprechaun Returns. I haven't seen this one yet. I know this is the first Leprechaun without Warwick Davis, I think. Um, yeah, I need to watch it at some point, though. Uh, another one I haven't seen, The Bye Bye Man. I heard this is terrible, absolutely terrible, but I haven't seen it yet. Uh, another M. Night Shyamalan movie, The Visit. Um, I like The Visit. It's a really fun found, found footage movie. Um, it has some really uh, unique scares um, for the genre. Uh, Shia LaBeouf movie, another Big Lots pickup for three bucks. Disturbia. I need to check this one out again. I remember liking it. I think I had it on DVD back in the day. Um, but yeah, it's kind of like a rear window ripoff. But I remember it being good. Uh, classic uh, uh, 2007 horror anthology, Trick or Treat. So this movie has really been held up by the horror community over the years. 
Um, and it's, yeah, it's a great anthology. I love it. I love it every, even more every time I watch it. This is a cool little cover. Um, Best Buy did these little lenticular covers not too long ago. So you'll see a few of those in my collection as well. And you got Mom and Dad, Nicolas Cage, Selma Blair. I haven't checked this one out yet. Um, I know a lot of people are praise this one. Um, but yeah, it's still in the case, so I haven't checked it out yet. Uh, another one, guys. You got Mandy, Nicolas Cage. This is really unique film. I like this one a lot when I watched it. Um, didn't love it, but I, I liked it a lot. It was The second half is way better than the first in that one. All right, guys. More horror type movies you got sam um sam elliott and the man that killed uh, bigfoot and hitler or hitler and then bigfoot this was not good i didn't like this one at all the premise was way more interesting than the actual film but yeah mirrors 2 another cheapo pickup haven't seen this one yet sounds like the blu-ray is actually <laughs> moving around in there machete danny trejo this one is it's fun it's fun. It's not great, but it's kind of fun. You got Mama from the director of uh, It and It Chapter 2, which uh, I forget is Andy Muschietti. This was his first movie, I think, Jessica Chastain. This movie I like um, up until like the last 15 minutes, and I think it looks a little goofy, and they introduce some bad CGI. Um, but yeah, it, it's solid, though. It's a solid horror movie. Uh, a movie that's one of the best horror films of the past 10 years, in my opinion. It follows. I love It Follows. Um, really creepy, really atmospheric. Um, kind of, I think, this one, along with The Babadook, kind of kicked off this new age kind of art house horror craze that we're seeing now. Um, you know, I'm not saying that they inspired filmmakers like Ari Aster and uh, Robert Eggers and other ones like that, but I think they definitely kind of paved the way and started that trend. So like this one along with the Babadook is the first I remember um, of people really getting into these kind of art house, lower budget horror films in the way that they are right now. But great film. I love that one. Classic horror film, guys. Chucky. I love the artwork on this one. Fantastic artwork. Child's Play is awesome. Love that movie. Um, this is actually my favorite Zack Snyder film. It's my favorite zombie film. The Dawn of the Dead. The, the <laughs> The Dawn of the Dead remake. Um, so this is controversial, but yeah, this is my favorite zombie film. I put this above the original. Um, I like Dawn of the Dead, the original, the George Romero, and I know it's blasphemy probably to some of you guys to say, um, but I enjoy this one way more. I remember seeing this in the theaters back in 2004. Completely blew my mind, and that trailer for it was awesome too. The opening is just so, so scary. I don't know. Uh, classic, guys, The Crow. So I haven't seen The Crow in a long time, but it, this is cool VHS slipcover. I need it's one I need to rewatch again. But of course, this is uh, the tragic story of Brandon Lee dying during the filmmaking of this movie. Um, very eerie the way it happened. You know, the same way, same thing happened to his father died during making a movie. Um, but yeah, The Crow. I need to revisit that one. See if it holds up. Curse of Chucky. Um, I actually don't mind this one. It's, I know Chucky kind of gets ridiculous with Bride and Seed. I don't like this movie. I thought they tried to have a return to form with this one, and it worked for the most part. Um, it's Cult of Chucky that I don't like. Classic horror, Nightmare on Elm Street. Really like this slip, uh, this, uh, this cover on this one. I need to buy the Blu-ray set, though, with all of them. I still have my DVD one. All right, guys, this is one of the only movies I can remember falling asleep to. <laughs> this is Ridley Scott's Hannibal. I actually, I remember, for some reason, very vividly seeing this in the theater and being so incredibly bored by it that I, like, dozed off in the middle of it. And, uh, yeah, I think this came out in, like, 2001, 2002, so I would have been, like, 16, 17, maybe, um, when it came out. Yeah, that, I, I need to revisit it. I might like it more now, but I haven't seen it since. Another classic horror, The Omen. So yeah, that's a really cool cover, and this is a good horror movie. Good horror movie from back in the day. Um, from the director of Mandy, Beyond the Black Rainbow, and I bought this, I think, right after I bought Mandy, and uh, I meant to watch it so I could kind of do a double feature of them, and I just haven't yet. So, Beyond the Black Rainbow. Uh, one of my top ten horror movies of all time. Classic, John Carpenter's The Thing. This movie, like, I liked it when I saw it, when I first saw it. 
Um, over the years, though, every time I watch it, I find something new to love about it. And it's just, it's so freaking good. The thing is awesome. Um, this is one of the best horror movies from the past 10 years. Um, probably the best slasher to come out since the 90s, in my opinion. Um, you're next. And yet you could call it a slasher, you can call it home invasion thriller, but it really takes that genre and kind of turns it on its head. And it's excellent. I love your next. Uh, this one I haven't seen, Apollo 18. I know it's a horror movie in space. Like, got a lot of bad reviews, but I saw it for cheap somewhere, so probably half price books or something. Haven't seen it though. Um, Satanic Panic. This one's interesting. I watched this one, I did like this movie. I don't think I ever reviewed it or talked about it. Um, this one's interesting because at Walmart, and I think Walmart only, they removed Satanic from the slipcover. Um, but when you take it out, it does say the full title, Satanic Panic. So that's interesting um, how they did that, how Walmart did that. Um, this is another classic, and in my opinion, um, Midsummer completely ripped this movie off, <laughs> Ari Aster, um, but The Wicker Man. So if you if you love Midsummer and you wanted to see a definitive version that concept actually done right, watch The Wicker Man. Wicker Man's incredible. Anaconda, classic 1997 monster creature feature, and yeah, this one's really fun. I watched it not too long ago. Um, it doesn't like really hold up in the traditional sense of what you think of when you say hold up, but I, I still enjoy it. It's fun. All right, guys, another uh, uh, Wingard, Adam Wingard film. He also did your next, but The Guest um, with, uh, I forget the guy's name. Let's see. So Dan Stevens. He's freaking phenomenal. This movie is like um, sci-fi action. It's like The Terminator. Um, it also reminds you like an old school slasher. It's so many genres rolled into one, and they execute them all just so seamlessly together. And, yeah, this is one of the best movies of the last few years. Like, I love the guest is awesome. Um, another one of these retro slipcovers for the new kids. So um, this is like kind of a slasher type movie from the 80s. I think it came out in 85, but it's got Lori Loughlin in it, which is interesting. You know, with all the controversy and trouble that she's been getting in. Um, you know, Aunt Becky from Full House. But um, this one's it's also got James Spader. He's the villain in it. But um, it, it was decent. It wasn't great or good. But it was decent. Uh, Jessica Biel in The Tall Man. I have not seen The Tall Man. Dollar Tree pickup, I think. Uh, Kira Kusama film, Jennifer's Body. This one actually did hold up for me. Um, I remember really liking it when it came out, even though it had Megan Fox in it, and she was kind of notorious at that time for not being a good actress. But I actually thought she was really great in this as like the, um, the kind of monster, bad guy, villain. Um, yeah, this is a really fun movie, Jennifer's Body. Uh, the Lazarus Effect. I haven't seen it. Uh, another Dollar General pickup. Last House on the Left. And this is the original uh, movie. And yeah, this one is very hard to watch if you haven't seen it. But this is Wes Craven. Um, one of his first films. But yeah, it's a difficult movie to watch. But it's really good. Uh, you got 28 Days Later. Classic zombie film. This is what a lot of people hold up as their favorite um, zombie film of all time. And, um, you know, it's in my top 10, but it's not my favorite. I like it. I like it. All right, guys, we're going to continue with the horror. Let me take a little drink real quick. All right, guys, moving into the shining. And I've showed this off on one of my shows the other day, but this is an awesome slipcover. Um, yeah, the shining, what more can I say about it? It's the premier horror film of all time. Like it, it's freaking, it's my number two horror film ever made. The house at the end of the street. I have never seen this. Uh, tell me down below if you've seen this and it, is it a ripoff of last house on the left? I'm not sure. It kind of sounds like it. You got some purge here with a purge anarchy. I think that's the only purge film I own. And this is the best in my opinion, the best purge film. Classic horror, Puppet Master. And um, this one's interesting because this movie is god-awful. I don't like it. <laughs> um, it's one of the rare instances where the first movie, I think, is one of the worst of the franchise. Because um, I think the sequels are better. Like, 
two and three are really good. I remember four and five are really fun too, but I don't like the first Puppet Master. Um, this is a really cool thriller, The Gifts, from a few years ago with uh, Jason Bateman and Joel Edgerton. Um, yeah, this is a really unique, really good engaging thriller that I didn't expect to be as good as it was. Um, Arnold Schwarzenegger in a zombie movie with Abigail Breslin, Maggie. This is a really good movie. This is actually a really good movie. It had some really good emotional acting from Schwarzenegger. Post-apocalyptic. All right, guys, this is a remake of a classic, Carrie. And then I have the actual classic, Carrie, right here. And this is one of those like weird, um, I think Walmart had these out. Um, they're kind of like Day of the Dead type slipcovers or something like that. But yeah, both Carries right here on full display. Obviously, the first one's a classic. The remake was okay. Another one of the best horror movies of the past 10 years, Cabin of the Woods. This was in my top 25 of the decade. This is just, this, is, this I, hold, I hold up for being just one of those movies that I walked into the theater with with zero expectations and came out just completely mind blown. Just the things they do in this movie. And I, I love that movie. Another one that I don't think it's talked about enough. I actually really like this movie from that came out, Blair Witch. I don't think it's as good as the original Blair Witch, but it does enough unique things and kind of furthers the lore um, enough that it's, yeah, I don't know. A lot of people don't talk about it, but I really liked it. Fil another film directed by Sam or Adam Wingard. Rob Zombie film, Lords of Salem. Have not seen that one. Haven't seen that one. Uh, this is the classic uh, It miniseries from the 90s, and this is a controversial opinion. But especially after seeing Chapter 2, I like the miniseries better than the new movies. I don't know. It's just because I saw this so many times as a kid, so I have nostalgia for it. I recognize that it's not better like filmmaking quality-wise, but I really enjoy that one. Invasions of the Body Snatchers. Classic. Alright, guys. We're going to get some Insidious in here. We got Insidious Chapter 1. Insidious Chapter 2. Insidious Chapter 3, directed by Lee Whannell. First two directed by James Wan. And Insidious, The Last Key. So I think that they're all good except for The Last Key. I don't like that one. Uh, this one's a really, um, really cool horror movie from a few years ago. Um, the Autopsy of Jane Doe. And I actually think I have it upside down because that's what it's supposed to be like. But yeah, this one has Brian Cox and uh, Emil Hirsch in it. That's a really good movie uh, if you haven't seen it. Really good horror movie. Strange and creepy. Uh, my favorite horror film of all time, The Exorcist. Got one of those cool lenticulars at Best Buy. Cool cover. Love the film. The Amityville Horror. Another classic horror film. Uh, really inspired the Conjuring movies, I would say. And you got Victor Crowley. And I don't know why I don't have Hatchet with it, but I do have the first Hatchet. Uh, I didn't like this movie at all. I like the first three Hatchets, but Victor Crowley is not good. Uh, the Woman in Black 2. Um, I found this one at Dollar General. I don't, I don't know why I own this one, but not the first one. I still haven't seen either one of them. I know the first one was like Daniel Radcliffe's like first big movie after Harry Potter. Um, they got Unfriended. I actually really like this movie. It's fun. Um, kind of innovating with the screen life kind of uh, genre that uh, Searching continued with, but they haven't really done anything else with it. I wish they would get back to telling more stories with that. Happy Death Day. I really like this movie, this Blumhouse movie. Um, it's a really cool, unique slasher from the past uh, few years. It, it's not great, but it's it's fun. I didn't like the sequel, though, so I don't own it. And you got Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers. This is uh, eh, that's one of the worst Halloween movies, to be honest. Another classic, top ten of all time, Jaws on Blu-ray. Great film. All right, let's keep it going, guys. We got some Final Destination. The first Final Destination. Classic horror. We got uh, Final Destination, which is the fourth one. Um, we got the Facility. So, I don't know what this is. Got a Dollar General for some reason. Halloween 2. Yep, I got things all out of order here. Um, Halloween 2. Rob Zombie's Halloween, which I actually don't mind on the rewatch. Um, 
This one I hate. This is probably the worst movie of all time. I hate this one. Um, I've thought about burning it so many times, uh, flushing it down the toilet, throwing it in the trash, uh, putting it in a wood chipper. It's 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 really bad. I don't like it. Don't make me talk about it. I'll get upset. Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. Um, I didn't like this when I first saw it because it didn't have Michael Myers in it, but I've come to appreciate it a lot more over the years. Another classic horror, Toby Hooper's Poltergeist. Cool slipcover right here. Another one of those Best Buy ones. Um, and here's the other Luca Guadagnino film I was talking about, the Suspiria remake. Uh, one of the rare instances, um, and we've seen this before with like Blade Runner 2049, where the remake surpasses the original, in my opinion. Um, not visually, but just as a film. I think this is superior than um, Dario Argento's film. Which I'm going to show you right now. Dario Gentle Suspiria. This is a really cool one that I had imported from Korea. Um, so it's kind of interesting. But yeah, I really wanted to see Suspiria. So I bought it and it was kind of cheap. So I, that's a cool, uh, unique slipcover that I own there. Uh, next one up, guys, is a movie that didn't get seen enough back when it came out. This is one of the best. One of my favorite films from 2018, Revenge. Um, this is just so freaking good. Like you think it's going to be this generic, um, kind of revenge type movie. And it's, it's so awesome. This movie, like I am so interested in whatever this director does. It has such style and the lead actress is great in it. Happy birthday to me. Interesting slipcover, VHS slipcover. Um, I haven't checked that one out yet though. Joyride with Paul Walker. I remember watching this movie so many times as a teenager for some reason. Um, you know, we got Candy Cane. Just, <laughs> it's ridiculous, but yeah. Final Destination 2. I don't know why I had this separated from the other ones. Like I said, I'm unorganized in my uh, collection. This is a really great uh, horror, home invasion, thriller movie. Uh, Fetty Alvarez's Don't Breathe. Um, yeah, this is, a, this is one that I don't think... Um, it was really praised when it came out, but not enough people talk about it anymore. Um, M. Night Shyamalan Split. Really great movie. Um, his kind of return to form. Uh, you got Truth or Dare from Blumhouse. I, I didn't hate this one. This one gets a lot. This is the one that everybody holds up. And now Fantasy Island. Same director, too. Um, when they talk about Blumhouse, if anybody says anything good about Blumhouse, they bring up, well, remember when they did Truth or Dare? Um, and yeah, I don't, I don't love the movie. I don't think it's great, but it's kind of fun, um, in a, in a stupid, like Final Destination type way. I don't know. I didn't hate the movie as much as everybody else did. Friday the 13th part two. It is the best Friday the 13th movie in my opinion. And therefore I think that's the only one I own on Blu-ray. Classic 80s horror. You got uh, you got the fly. I have this cool uh, another one of these kind of Day of the Dead covers that Walmart sold a few years ago. The fly is a great movie though. Uh, here we go. Hatchet. I like Hatchet. That's a really cool homage to like slashers. This is a freaking I love this movie. American Werewolf in in London. Classic. Love that John Landis. Such a great. Um, uh, transformation scene in that movie just the practical effects they use uh sinister from uh from uh, scott derrickson director of dr strange i really like sinister this one i love top three of the decade or the 21st century in my opinion for horror get out this is a great horror film um and it this is one that gets better every single time i watch it love get out the Strangers, Pray at Night. I don't know why I have the sequel, which isn't as good as the first, but I don't have the first. Um, I need to get the Scream Factory of it, though. Silent House with Elizabeth Olsen. I haven't seen this one. I don't know anything about Silent House. And Joyride 3, Roadkill. So I got that one at Dollar General. I haven't opened it. And I don't have the second one. I didn't know they did sequels until I saw the third one. All right, guys. Let's get into it. Psycho classic horror love psycho the entire four psycho collection so i need to get into watching the sequels again soon but very happy to have that collection i got it for pretty cheap the faculty robert rodriguez love this movie um classic uh 
like a kind of slasher type uh, sci-fi movie. It melds a lot of different genres together. But yeah, the movie's great. Jeepers Creepers, cool little cover on that one. I uh, got some Mission Impossible here. Mission Impossible Goes Protocol. This is my favorite of um, the new ones, um, for sure. I love Ghost Protocol. Um, then you got Mission Impossible 5, Rogue Nation. Cool little slipcover here. Great Mission Impossible movie. I got the Marine 3 with the Miz. I, I don't know why. Oh, Deadpool's back, guys. Another Deadpool photo, photo bomb with the day after tomorrow. So that's cool. He's riding a he's riding a goose as New York's being destroyed by a gigantic wave. Need for Speed with Aaron Paul. This is when Aaron Paul tried to get out of TV. I haven't seen this yet, and uh, I don't think I ever will, to be honest. Twilight Eclipse. I haven't seen this either. I don't think I ever will. I don't know why I have. I think I found it at like Goodwill. It was during a time when I was trying to get stuff at Goodwill and sell it on eBay. And then nobody bought this. I think I put it on there for like a dollar. Nobody bought it. I don't, I don't know. It's got Robert Pattinson in it though. He's great, right? All right, guys, you ready for some for some Die Hard Bruce Willis action? Die Hard on Blu-ray. Die Hard Two. Die Hard with a Vengeance. Live Free or Die Hard. And a good day to die hard. So I got most of those at the Dollar General on that sale. So that was pretty cool to be able to grab the whole die hard collection there for only like six bucks. Um, then you got Mel Gibson, Get the Gringo. I haven't seen that one yet. Classic, I found this. I don't. I wish they had the other two, but Lord of the Rings is cool little uh, Warner Icons collection, but that's a cool slipcover for that, so I grabbed it. I haven't seen Lord of the Rings in a while. Um, some more cool slipcovers from Walmart, San Andreas with a rock. I haven't seen that one either, but a lot of people say it's a really great disaster movie. Chasing Mavericks with Gerard Butler. I haven't seen this one. I don't, I don't know. I probably will never watch it. King Kong, Peter Jackson. That's a really cool slipcover on that. I think I got it at Dollar General too. I need to rewatch this at some point. I remember it being good, but I need to rewatch it. Then you got Godzilla. Um, I really enjoyed this one. Definitely more than King of the Monsters. I'm excited for um, Kong vs. Godzilla, which is the next one I got. got Kong Skull Island. So um, Both of those are good movies. Definitely the best. Um, so, right, so next we got some John Wick. John Wick. John Wick Chapter 2. John Wick Chapter 3 Parabellum on 4K. So I need to upgrade the other two to 4K, but I haven't yet. So, all right, guys, let me get the next stack. All right, guys, so we are in the home stretch. I've got all the rest of my Blu-rays lined up. And if you are still with me, if you're still watching the video, I really appreciate you. I really appreciate you watching this video. But the thing about this video is it's going to be a long time before I do another one of these kind of collection updates. So this video is going to kind of live... Um, up at the top of my page so if you know if you don't watch this all in one sitting that's fine you know just go back you know watch uh watch 20 minutes here 20 minutes there um but you know i appreciate all the support and you know i really this was a big undertaking for me and uh yeah but we're finally we're almost through it guys let's let's go let's go we're gonna do it and now we're gonna go into some you got some jurassic world so uh jurassic world the first one this one's okay it's an okay movie um yeah I like it. The sequel, it's bad. I think the first 20 minutes are really strong, and then it just kind of falls off a cliff, like exactly what happens in the first 20 minutes. But yeah, Jurassic Fallen Kingdom's not that good. All right, guys, Jurassic Park, the classic, the goat, one of the best movies ever made. Love that one. Then we have The Lost World. I think this movie gets criticized a little unfairly. I like this one quite a bit. Um, definitely not as good as the first, but none of the sequels are. I think it's the best of the sequels, though. And I don't own three. Um, American Assassin, Michael Keaton. I have not checked this one out, but I did hear good things. So I might at some point. All right, we got Con Air. Classic 1997 film. Put the bunny back in the box. Yep, Con Air. Con Air's great. 
And we got The Family, Robert De Niro, Michelle Pfeiffer. I have not seen The Family. Um, I think I bought this at Goodwill. Um, but yeah, I don't know if I'll ever watch that one. Uh, Taken 2. I've seen Taken 2. Got Taken 3. Do I have the third one? No, but I do have Unknown. Basically the same thing, because it's all Liam Neeson action films. We got Runner Runner, Ben Affleck, Justin Timberlake. Haven't seen this one either. It's an interesting pairing, though. Ben Affleck, Justin Timberlake. That's interesting. We got one of the best James Fond films ever made, Skyfall. Still have not seen this one. Um, I, I feel less pressure to go back and check out all the James Bond movies now, because... Uh, the No Time to Die isn't coming out till November, but I'm definitely going to rewatch all the uh, Craig Bond films before No Time to Die comes out. All right, guys, Rampart with Woody Harrelson. I have not seen this. Um, it's got an interesting cast, but no, I haven't seen Rampart. Found it at uh, Dollar Tree, probably. And we got Equalizer 2. Or no, this is the first Equalizer. I've heard really good things about this, um, being like Denzel's John Wick. Um, I didn't hear great things about the second one, but the first one I have heard good things. Bloodfather, Mel Gibson, haven't seen that one. Uh, King Arthur, Guy Ritchie movie, um, have not seen that one. Cool slipcover though. Two Guns, Denzel and Mark Wahlberg, haven't seen that one either. I know it's a theme with this. Mel Gibson, Edge of Darkness, have not seen it. Another Deadpool, Speed. This is a classic action movie. I love Speed from the 90s with him and Keanu, Sandra Bullock. Um, yeah, this is a great movie. Great action movie if you haven't seen it. All right, another VHS slipcover, Silent Rage with Chuck Norris. Haven't got a chance to check this out yet. That's a cool slipcover, though. you got to have checked at least one Chuck Norris movie in your collection. Or else, what are you, what are you doing with your life? Uh, Last Action Hero, Schwarzenegger. This is a movie I haven't seen since I was a kid. I'm interested to go back and rewatch it, see how it holds up. Um, this is a great movie, First Blood, um, Sylvester Stallone. Um, yeah, I, I don't know about the other Rambo films, except for Last Blood, I've seen that, but I haven't seen the three in the middle. Um, this one's definitely a classic, really great film. All right, guys, we got three indie movies. We got Raiders, uh, Last Crusade, and Temple of Doom. I need to check those out again at some point. I haven't seen Indy since I was in high school. All right, guys, moving on. We got Transcendence with Johnny Depp. Uh, I think that was a Dollar Tree pickup. Otherwise, why would I own that? Uh, Godzilla, King of Monsters. So I think I bought this on Black Friday just to own it with the other two. Like I guess I don't like that movie that much. It's got some cool monster fights, but it's just not a good movie. Uh, the Pet Cemetery remake, which I did like. I didn't like it as much as the original, but I did like this one. Solid remake. Uh, Mission Impossible Fallout. This was an incredible action film, uh, 2018. And yeah, one of the best Mission Impossible movies. All three of the new ones that come out in recent years are great. A Star is Born. I, I like this movie a lot. I like I, I liked it in the theaters. Um, I wasn't as high on it as most, but I've rewatched it twice since I bought it. Yeah, it's a really good movie. Great music. I love the soundtrack and the original music in that movie. Zombieland. It's a cool little kind of zombie parody movie uh, from late 2000s. That's a really fun movie. Her. This is one of the best movies of the past decade as well. Great sci-fi film. Great Joaquin Phoenix performance. Probably one of his best um, up until Joker. Sicario 2, Day of the Saldado. I thought this was good, um, but definitely a step down from the first one. So, And it kind of just like makes you ask, why did they make it? I, I don't understand. Um, Grudge Match. Have not seen this. Robert De Niro Stallone. It's interesting. It is interesting pairing. Uh, Premium Rush. Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Have not seen this one. Uh I haven't really heard that much about it either. I don't know. Uh, Valley of Eli. I don't even. I don't know why. It has a Charlize Theron and Tommy Lee Jones. Has anybody heard of this movie? Two thousand six. I haven't. I haven't even heard of that movie. I own it though. I think I bought it at Dollar Tree. Gallows Dollar Tree. The Morrow. 
Dollar Tree. Exeter <laughs> Dollar Tree. Uh, <laughs> uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Part 3. Uh, I I didn't like this movie as a kid, but I, I own it. I own it. Wet Hot American Summer. Got this as Dollar Tree too. Haven't seen it yet, but I remember the Netflix series. The Netflix series was ridiculous. Came out a few years ago. Run All Night, Dollar Tree. Power Rangers. Um, uh, I, don't, I, I, I can't remember too much. I know I watched it. Um, it was good, maybe? I don't know. I don't know how you make Power Rangers serious, though. It doesn't feel right. Oh, this is a this is my favorite Paul Thomas Anderson movie, Boogie Nights. Great film. Love that one. And you got The Master. This is really great, too. Another great Paul Thomas Anderson. Probably The Master, Boogie Nights, and uh, There Will Be Blood, my top three from him. Magnolia. I haven't seen Magnolia. I've heard a lot of great things, though. Inherent Vice. I haven't seen that one, either. Need to watch it. Straight out of Compton. This one I actually will probably be watching and reviewing soon on my Instagram page. Um, I've heard a lot of great things, so I need to check that one out. And you got Grand Torino. Get off my lawn. Clint Eastwood was supposed to be Eastwood's last starring role, but of course he came back to do uh, The Mule like a couple years ago, I think. Um, but yeah, this is a really great movie. I love Grand Torino. Um, cool slipcover for The French Connection with uh, Gene Hackman. So this is a classic that I have not seen yet. I need to check that one out. Moving on, guys. We're going to get in some family-friendly movies right here. Um, we got Goosebumps, Jack Black. I thought this was good. I've rewatched it a few times. My kids really love it. They love this one and the sequel. Um, I love the original show, the books. Obviously, I still have my entire 64 book collection of the originals. Um, but yeah, this is good. I like the movie. I like the sequel better, I think. Uh, Big Trouble in Little China, classic Carpenter, Kurt Russell, VHS slipcover, really cool. Uh, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs 2. This is one of like the first Blu-rays I bought um, a few years ago when it came out. It came with like a lunchbox. Um, I really liked the first one, and I bought this based on that, and it's not that good. And come to find out when I learned more about directors and stuff, it's because Lord Miller didn't do this one, I think. All right, we got The Greatest Showman. Um, this has great music, but the movie is not so great, in my opinion. Rise of the Guardians. Um, this is a fun DreamWorks movie from a few years ago. I remember liking it. Diary of a Wimpy Kid, The Long Haul. This is one of those kind of cheesy uh, family comedies you watch with your kids, um, which I did, and they loved it. Uh, Dog Days, Wimpy Kids. Got Despicable Me 2. I like Despicable Me 2. I don't think it's as good as the first one, but I like that one. And we got The First Diary of a Wimpy Kid. I don't think I've watched this one with my kids yet. I've watched the sequels, but not the first one. That's weird. Um, this one is a great family uh, kids movie from a few years ago. Really cool, the Lego movie. So, yeah, it's a great, great release. I got the 3D one for some reason. Um, Lego Batman awesome movie. I really love this one too. One of the best Batman films. Um, Lego Movie 2. I haven't watched it since the theaters. I remember being a little disappointed. It was fun, but it just didn't hit like the first one did. Alright, a classic Disney movie, Lady and the Tramp. Um, you know, it, the remake that came out on Disney Plus, just it, it didn't hold up. It did not measure up to this at all. Um, the original is way better. And we got Zootopia, really great movie. Um, I think this is one that you should definitely be showing to your kids right now, if you have kids, um, because it says it does a lot of really subtle things with race, or even not even that subtle, but um, it's like with the different animals and trying to get along. And it, it was it's a really good film um, to kind of introduce um, your kids to like social issues and stuff in a in a palatable way. Monsters Inc. Great classic Pixar film. Love that one. Cool slipcover too. Oh God, this one. This <laughs> this is one of the best movies ever made. Um, one of my favorite films of all time from my childhood, Beetlejuice. Tim Burton. My favorite Tim Burton film, beyond without a shadow of a doubt. Um, it, yeah. If you have, there's a lot of people that haven't seen Beetlejuice. I've discovered um, just in the online community. So if you haven't seen Beetlejuice, watch Beetlejuice. It's freaking amazing. 
Uh, classic Disney movie. My favorite animated movie of all time, Aladdin. Great movie. Um, a lot of people's favorite animated movie of all time, Beauty and the Beast. I recognize the greatness of it, um, and it was nominated for Best Picture and all that stuff. It's not one of my favorites, though. Uh, this is one that grows on me um, every time I watch it. I've seen it like three or four times now. Um, but Coco from a few years ago. It's in my top ten Pixar movies. It's it's freaking phenomenal. If you get to the end of this movie and do not shed at least one tear, you're not human. Like <laughs> it, it will break you down at the end of this movie. I love it. Uh, all right, guys. We got some, got some bear love here. Some Paddington movies. Both of these are great. Both of these are great, and I think Paddington 2, maybe Paddington 1 as well, um, but Paddington 2 still holds 100% on the tomato meter meter on Rotten Tomatoes. All right, guys, we got John Carter from Mars. I have not seen this one. I heard it was all right. It, it flopped at the box office, but I heard it was okay. All right, guys, Dr. Seuss, The Lorax. This movie, uh, I have fond memories of it. Because my son used to wear the deep, my DVD of it out when he was like two. We watched this movie every day for the longest time. Um, so I like the music and I like the some things about it. It's not the best movie. Um, and I can understand if you don't love it. But yeah, the Lorax I have fond memories of. Alright guys, and I got two Planes movies here. My son was obsessed with cars when he was little. So we bought him the Planes movies. They didn't land as well. And I think he may have watched them both once. But I still have them on Blu-ray. All right, guys. Keep on going with some animation. We got Frozen, a movie that my daughter loved when she was one or two. And then, yeah, I've watched this movie probably 55 times at least. Um, great music. The movie gets old, though. Uh, another classic duo, Gremlins, Gremlins 2. I, I love both of those movies for completely different reasons. Um, Gremlins 2 is just ridiculous, almost a parody of the first one, um, but it's so much fun. And the first one's just a great like Christmas slash horror movie. How to Train Your Dragon 2. This is a really good movie, um, really good series, and I still have yet to see the third one. Need to, though. Got some Shrek. Shrek Forever After. And this is one my son watched a lot when he was little, too. Um, I remember this being... Um, Pretty good, actually. Um, it's it's better than the third one. I think Shrek and Shrek 2 are better, um, are the best, but I think Shrek Final Chapter is better than the third one. All right, speaking of Cars earlier, yeah, I bought these for my son when he was little. I got Cars and Cars 2 on, on Blu-ray. Um, and I think that Cars is a good movie. I do. I think it gets kind of lumped in with the other ones because, you know, people don't lo people like that hate on the Cars franchises, but Cars is actually good. Cars 2 is not. All right. We got a 4K here with The Lion King. I was very disappointed in this release because it didn't have an actual slipcover. Um, so, yeah, this is one of the rare instances of Target kind of fumbling with their uh, exclusive. Happy to own it, though. One of the best animated films. Edward Scissorhands, this cool uh, slipcover. Um, surprisingly enough, you know, I went a long time hating this movie. I, for some reason, when I was a kid, I just I didn't like it, and I just chose to not like it. I rewatched it again a couple years ago. It's good. I I can't deny that it's a good movie. It's not my favorite Burton, um, but yeah, Alan Arkin in this movie as the dad really put it over the top for me though. Love it. Love his performance. All right, guys, we got The Force Awakens on Blu-ray, but it's in a black case, like a 4K, so that's kind of weird. Um, I love this movie, so it's the best of the new trilogy. Got Rogue One on Blu-ray. Um, this is a really good movie. The last 30 minutes are phenomenal, but to be honest, a lot of it's pretty boring, and I think the characters are bland, but that's just my opinion. Got the entire Star Wars uh, six-film collection the, for the first six films in this collection. Um, so I haven't bought them all individually yet. I, w I would love to buy those individual cases. They look really cool, but I, yeah, I just can't justify buying all those. And you got Frosty the Snowman. We're going to get in some Christmas releases here on Blu-ray. You got Elf. This is a classic uh, uh, Christmas movie. I love Elf. Christmas Story, another classic Christmas movie, top three for me. 
Um, you got both Home Alone films. Great. I love them both. Obviously, the first one's the best, but I, I love watching both of them around Christmas time. All right, the best right here, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. This is so, so freaking funny. It's one of my favorite comedies, Christmas movies of all time. It doesn't feel like Christmas until I've watched that movie. And we got Scrooged, Bill Murray. This is a great movie as well. Um, great Christmas movie. Love that one. And you got Jingle All the Way, which it's 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 fun. It's not the best Christmas movie, but it's fun. And I got Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, the Rankin Bass uh, movies, classic. Got Miracle on 34th Street, classic movie. And we got How the Grinch Stole Christmas with Jim Carrey. So a lot of people like to hate on this movie, the movie by Ron Howard. I, I love this movie. I still watch it every Christmas, and yeah, it's one of those staple Christmas movies, in my opinion. All right, guys, so The Full Monty. I watched this recently. I didn't love it. It's, it's okay. This I watched recently as well, and this is a classic. Uh, Citizen Kane. Great film. Um, yeah, I, I understand the hype after seeing this. It does so many unique things that a lot of filmmakers still do today. So, yeah, great movie. Hansel and Gretel, Witch Hunters. I saw this in theaters, and I didn't like it that much back when I saw it, but... Yeah. All right, another classic, Sunset Boulevard. Um, I like this one for um, what's her name, Gloria's Gloria Swanson's performance. She is phenomenal. I didn't love the movie as a whole, but I recognize its significance and its importance. So I have a whole video on it if you go back further enough. I thought I'd talk about that in Citizen Kane. Copland. I watched this recently, and I loved this movie. Um, this is a great movie. James Mangold did this movie. Same guy did Logan for V Ferrari. Um, yeah, just a great film. Love Copland. And we got a movie from a few years ago that I absolutely love. Top three of the past decade, Sing Street. If you have not seen Sing Street, this has one of the best uh, movie soundtracks of all time. I love Sing Street. All right, guys, we got Trick. It's a horror film that I saw in Walmart and picked up. Jamie Kennedy's in it. I haven't checked it out yet, though. Uh, Rambo Last Blood. Picked this up for cheap at Target uh, when it came out. They had like a cartwheel or something. Um, I enjoyed that movie for the last 20, 30 minutes. The whole movie isn't great though. Alright, classic Cameron film Titanic. You know, what can you say about it? Watched that recently as well. Didn't hold up as well as I thought it would, but it's still a great, that disaster sequence with the ship is awesome. Uh, Liam Neeson's The Grey. Haven't got a chance to check that out, but was happy to find it with a slipcover. That was really cool. The original uh, Claude Rains, The Invisible Man, found that at uh, at uh, Big Lots. Slipcover is really cool. Also found this at Big Lots for five bucks. The entire Planet of the Apes, the old school collection. So the original movie and then all of the sequels that came out. So that was a cool collection to find for five bucks on Blu-ray. Uh, Paradise Hills. I bought this earlier this year at Walmart and I haven't got a chance to watch it yet. Yesterday, so I saw this movie last year in theaters, and it's a funny story with this one. I saw it in theaters, and they shut the movie off the last 15 minutes, like my theater just shut down, and uh, I didn't get to see the last 15 minutes, so I need to go back and rewatch that one. Jay and Silent Bob reboot, the only Kevin Smith movie that I own, I think, on Blu-ray. Um, I need to buy some like Clerks and Mallrats and some of those movies, but. Um, this was really fun. It, it only works if you really love the view askew of verse, um, and get all the references and everything. But yeah, that was a good movie. I liked it. Jojo rabbit. One of the best movies of last year. Love this movie. Great performances. Um, Scarlett Johansson in particular should have got an Oscar nom or win for that movie. Ford V Ferrari. Great James Mangold movie. Love this movie. Zombieland Double Tap, uh, great movie. Did an unboxing for this one a few months ago. You can check that out. But yeah, this is about as good as the first one, in my opinion. Um, but honestly, just a rehash, really. Stoker, never heard of it. think I got that one at Dollar Tree. Panic in the Streets. So this is a kind of a classic movie, I think. Um, Any Given Sunday. Found this at Walmart in the bin, $5 bin. So I went and grabbed it. Um, classic Pacino 
Jamie Foxx, uh, Cameron Diaz. Great cast in the movie. Need to check it out. All right, guys. Getting into the final stack here. Mind Games is an MBD collection. So I got this sent from me from Arrow. I um, haven't got a chance to watch it yet. Um, these are all like Mill Creek releases that I've gotten sent recently. But we got All the Pretty Horses with Matt Damon. Trapped with uh, Kevin Bacon, Charlize Theron. Heroes with Harrison Ford and Henry Winkler. Never heard of that one. Eddie Macon's Run. I did watch this one. It was a fun like kind of TV movie type movie from the 80s. But yeah, it's not great though. A um, couple double packs. Reservation Road, Return to Paradise. Those both have uh, uh, Joaquin Phoenix in it. Um, haven't checked those out yet though. White Noise 2 and Rosewood Lane. Haven't checked those out. Made in Manhattan. All right, and the last ones I'm going to go over, guys. I got some TV collections here that I got from Mill Creek. I got the Mindy Project. Got Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Got 30 Rock. And one of my favorite sitcoms of all time, King of Queens. That's a great set right there. Um, I, I did actually break this open and watch a few because I did really like the show. But all right, guys, that is it. I am through every single Blu-ray in my collection. So... I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and for those of you all sticking through the entire video, I thank you very much. Um, and like I said, like this is not all of my collection. Uh, if you want to go back and see my Screen Factories, my Arrows, uh, my 4Ks, my Steel Books, and all that stuff, I did those in separate videos. Um, but I'm going to have them all in the same playlist, so you can go check those out in my Blu-ray collection playlist. But that is it, guys. No more collection videos for a while. Of course, I'll do weekly hauls and stuff like that. Um, but as far as showing off my entire Blu-ray collection, I'll probably wait a couple years to do that again. This was a big undertaking. I am exhausted right now, but I appreciate you guys watching. Go ahead, if you guys can, just go, just click that like button for me uh, to help this video out. Comment down below. I know throughout the video, I had prompted you all to comment on several things. Just leave me a comment, please, if you enjoyed the video. And again, I thank you guys for watching. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel. If you haven't yet, uh, check out Levels of Geek Live. We go live every Mondays and Wednesday nights. We'll be on there tonight as well, talking about the greatest uh, uh, villains of all time. So appreciate you guys watching, and we'll see you next time.